going on guys? It's your boy Darren Gilliam, aka Black Flags Matter, back for another edition of the NASCAR Weekly Podcast on my channel, Black Flags Matter. Today we are joined by the one and only Josh Williams, one of the premier underdogs in the Xfinity Series. How's it going, man? What's happening, man? Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, yes. We are glad to finally have you on. So uh, I guess um, I'll get my first question out of the way. Talk about your 2020 season. Definitely a major improvement compared to 2019 for sure. Yeah, definitely. We uh, we come out of the gate pretty strong. Um, you know, uh, speedway racing kind of bit us there a little bit, but we picked up quick and gained a lot of points back, had some good solid finishes uh, first couple races of the season. And then uh, we hit a little little – bad luck streak here recently but uh hopefully here this double header we can turn it around and uh go back on the other side of things and and uh put the old 92 machine back up inside top 10 where it needs to be yeah, that's for sure wait who's going second we need to talk about that before the uh, before the show <laughs> i completely I, I like forgot. to i like to ask uh drivers the few i've gotten to talk to like kind of ask what the difference is like racing since the hiatus without fans in the stands like how different is that how eerie is that what does that change about like race day does it kind of help keep you in a zone or just what's it like racing in like quiet stadiums i guess man it's the fans is what makes nascar it's what makes the racing fun you know i mean it's a sport where you know fans are more interactive with us than, than any other sport really and um it kind of sucks man I, I love the fans you know you like meeting different people and you know, I mess with all the fans all the time, too, because I'm usually, like, pushing the car through tech and things like that. And I'm like, hey, we need help. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, come on. And then uh, they find out I'm the driver. They're like, well, that's pretty cool. But, you know, that's gone. You know, that, that whole, you know, interaction has gone. So it kind of sucks. And, you know, like before the race starts, you know, National Anthem and things like that, there's, you know, usually people cheering and, and having a good time. And it's gone. But I miss it. And hopefully we can get back to it soon. Is it uh, Jarrett next to me? Danny, uh, Danny. Uh, Danny, go ahead. <laughs> Flip a <All> coin. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Josh, like you, you mentioned, like it being so different, everything. So, if what's the one thing I guess you're looking forward to getting back first? Obviously, there's going to be so much stuff that we have to slowly e elevate to. Like, what are you most looking forward to getting back? Uh, I think for us is um, for our small teams practice. I mean, the, the thing that we miss most is is track time because we don't really have, you know, sim programs and stuff like that. We've got a pull-down machine at the shop, but it's not, you know, I mean, it's not 100% uh, up to date. But um, I, practice would help us a bunch. That's that's one of our biggest things that we're lacking It's just trying to get the car as good as it can be. So, you know, now we have to use the first two stages to, to get our car right, and then we've got to race, you know, in that final stage and, and really give it all we got. So okay, we kind of give up a lot more than we should uh, at the beginning of a run. So just when it comes to like more underfunded teams, uh, how much more important is practice compared to like how it would be for one of the well-funded teams or one of the ones you see like in the top five each week? Oh, it definitely makes a big difference. I mean, you know, some of them teams, they just, they make changes on a computer before they put it in the car. So, um, you know, we don't have that luxury. We just kind of got to look at each other and say, all right, well, let's just change it and see what happens. So. It's, uh, it's definitely a disadvantage for us not having practice. But, you know, at the same time, maybe uh, maybe we don't get a chance to, to mess it up. So I don't know. I don't know how I don't know how that goes sometimes. Sometimes it might help us. Yeah, so uh, you talked about your 2020 season for a brief moment. Uh, you know, um, in racing, you have the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Um, talk about both of those. So um, I assume your highest of highs this year was your top 10 finish in, in and um, at – at Fontana, and then also um, probably the lowest of lows was probably the wreck at Talladega. So talk about those and just, I mean, like, what was it like going through those moments? Yeah, I mean, I'd probably say the lowest one was Pocono. Oh, okay. You know, like lap four. That was horrible. Oh, Talladega. yeah, I completely forgot about that. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> Talladega wasn't so bad. I mean, it's speedway race, and it is what it is. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we've had those good finishes, and we, and we ran up, you know, up front. I like to call it up front and uh that's that's good for us and it's it builds a lot of momentum you know everybody comes to the track and they're excited you know it's like man we we took this dgm car and, and we finished 10th with it we yeah, finished i was ninth excited for you for that top 10 as soon as i came up to <laughs> yeah. give you a big old hug i'm like yes you got a top 10 i'm like thank goodness so that's oh, cool <laughs> yeah yeah man no it's awesome i mean it's it's for a little team like that to run good you know you got c clemens us i mean for us to run with those big teams like that is 
that's impressive. I mean, that's good, and that's what the sport needs. You know, and I, I think the fans like that too. Is you know having the underdog guy race against the big boys and and show them what they can do. So, so uh, you know that that's always a good point. And then you've got your lap four incidents and destroy the best race car that you got in the fleet. So it's kind of uh, I don't know. Like you said, highs highs, lows yeah. to lows, and you just gotta you gotta you know roll with the punches, man. Oh, I mean, yeah. you can't get down about it. You just gotta keep digging forward. So that's what we're gonna do. Absolutely. And speaking of stories, like you said, I know there's a big story today that uh, all uh, three NASCAR series will be running the Daytona road course later this year. I want to know what you think about that. Is this kind of coming out of left field? Are the drivers kind of concerned about it, or is this something you're really excited for? Um, I'm, you know, not really a road racer by no means, but uh, it's somewhere different. You know what I mean? I love going to new places and, and trying to learn new tracks and things like that. So, I mean, I'm excited about it. I mean, plus we get to go to Daytona like twice, well, three times now. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. That place is awesome, man. And I think we're going to run the same course as the 24 hours. Is yeah, that correct? Daytona course, I think so, I believe probably. So, yeah. so, yeah. Well, at least we at least I can put around on iRace a little bit, see how many times I can run through the grass. <laughs> <laughs> what I thought was interesting is that the uh, ARCA series is also going there, too. So, it makes me wonder, you know, how many people from – Xfinity series, truck series, well, truck series also going through for that matter. And the cup series may end up in an ARCA ride just to, just to try to learn it. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, that's funny. Cause I, I still own, uh, I'd probably say 90% of the ARCA stuff that, that we ran, you know, all the way up into 2016. And, um, we got a road course car sitting there when they released that the guy works for me, John, he, he sends me a picture of it. He says, Hey, he says, we got time. So I don't know. You might see you might see the old number six machine roll out in the, the Arca series at the Daytona oh, Road yeah. Course. Oh. I mean, it's seat time. Why not? I mean, I already own the cars. I own the motors. So it, 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 kind, it kind of makes sense because, like, practically every person, unless they've got some sort of weird opportunity where they ran a, a Rolex twenty four one time, they're all rookies at that particular track. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You know. And the, the good thing about it, you know, my teammates that run the road courses, you know, Alex LeBay and, and Preston Partis, they're, they're good road racers. So, I mean, I lean on them a little bit to, to help me out. So, it's uh, I think it's going to be a blast. Are we? I hope they do it at night, though. If it's not at night, I don't think it's going to be. It won't be as feeling. The, the, won't be the as time for release. Yeah. Let me if, see. I have it right here. You might Our, get uh, some rain in there, too. How yeah. would that be? Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, it's, dude, it's, I'm telling you, I was praying for rain in Indy because rain's fun. <laughs> Plus, I didn't have breaks, so I would have been just fine in the rain. <laughs> oh, no. So I'm, I'm looking at the weekend, and the latest race of the weekend for the Daytona Road Course is ARCA at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Oh, so come on. Probably not enough. <laughs> what is it with these late start times, man? It's always something with these late start times. The weather comes to effect. Oh, it's, oh, yeah. it's whatever. But. <laughs> but I was sticking with like the talking about the road courses. Um, I want to ask your take, Indy Oval or Indy Road Course? Which one do you want? Like, which one do you prefer? Indy Road Course. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not even a road course guy, but it's just fun, you know? Like, the the Indy Oval for you know, the extreme. I don't think Cup, Cup needs to stay on the Oval because it's the Cup Series. You know, that's the, the Brickyard mm-hmm. is huge. You know, that's something, that's something that, you know, everybody wants to win. Um but the the Xfinity deal now on the road course that's cool. I mean it's fun racing. You know the tracks got some tight spots in it. I mean and and you seen the the finish the last three laps there. I mean that was fun to watch. You know them guys are they're really you, you're getting after it. You can hustle. And I mean the the, the oval you're you're kind of stuck. You know what I mean you get behind somebody and you lose the air or you know you really can't. I can't say you can't get up on the wheel and and make up some time, but I mean, you really can't. So. I, I like the road course at Indy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think we're all in agreement. Yeah, Indy road course over the regular Indy all day, of course. All right, so um, we're going to get into some fan questions really quick. So um, let me scroll up. Oh, we got a lot of them. So uh, Fist Productions question is, who was your favorite driver as a kid? Uh, Tony Stewart was probably my one of my favorite drivers growing up. I mean, Dale Earnhardt, of course, um, <clears throat> you know, just because of the way he was and I guess that's why I'm a Tony Stewart fan too. Just, I mean, I'm kind of like old school, you know, rough, rough edges kind of guy. So, uh, those two were probably my favorites growing up. Would you say Tony Stewart's the closest thing to Dell Senior that we've had, or no? 
Uh, I don't think anybody is. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, good answer. Good answer there. Yeah. I, I, I don't think anybody is, and you know, I um, you know, I, I was always a big Mark Martin fan. Mm-hmm. Everything I drove from the time that I was four and a half years old till you know I, I moved into the Xfinity series, I ran was number six, and it was the feathered six that that he always ran, and my dad was number six for years because we loved Mark Martin, and you know he he was uh, he was one of my idols for sure. Um, I actually bought my first quarter midget from Mark Martin. So, oh, was, uh, I didn't know. Yep, that. yep. Well, went uh, went over to his hangar in, in New Smyrna and, and picked out my first quarter midget, and uh, they were numbered back then. Uh, I drove for for Nervo, so, uh, and I, Dad's like, well, which one do you want? Because they were all they were all the same, mm-hmm. but they had number plates on the top, and I picked number twenty because Tony Stewart. Yeah. That's good. Well, good this, this, is, this is all really prepper because we had Mark Martin on the show last week. So yeah, there you yeah, go. yeah, yeah. Mark Martin really has a foothold in like in like every racer's career. It seems like he was mentioned just yeah. so many racers and stuff. I had no idea you bought your first quarter midget from him. That's very interesting. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna try to work on him. I, I want him to run an ARCA race, like a short track ARCA race. Somewhere. Oh wait, Mark Martin. You want Mark Martin to run a uh, uh, one of these ARCA races? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. We would love yes. that. We would love that. You know, we had him on last week, and basically he was like. I'm retired now. I'm not doing this. Blah, blah. I'm like, Good impression. But, uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, you, you, you can do one more race. Come on. You can do one yeah. more race, right? I mean, like, you yeah. gotta go somewhere fun, man. Like, say if you in like Nashville fairgrounds or yeah. Salem, somewhere like that, like don't go to a, don't go to a mile and a half, go to, go to some just local short track and just have a blast. I was about to say, if, if Sterling Marlin can still be out wheeling it at the national fairgrounds in a light model, get Mark yeah. Martin and an ARCA car over at Nashville when they come back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, 100%. Mark Martin, Mark Martin's a badass. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, kind of a personal question uh, pertaining to Mark Martin. So since he was one of your favorite drivers growing up, do you kind of model your driving style after him or let's say Tony Stewart? Which one? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm more on the Tony side. I, <laughs> I, it kind of sometimes gets me in trouble. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, I just, you know, I want people to know, if, you know, if you race me clean, I'm going to race you clean. But if, if you race me dirty, then. That's what you're going to get back. So, mm. um, I guess my problem is where I grew up, you went and handled your problems and now you can't. So. Yeah. You, you know, you, that's a good, that's a good point you bring up because I feel like, especially on the, uh, you know, in the local ranks, it's like you have your two set of drivers, you have your grown men and then you have these, you know, quote unquote little kids who, you know, their parents are basically funding the ride. So it's like, I mean, uh, Tony Stewart did say this last year, or I think it was earlier this year. Like, I mean, if you're like one of these kids wrecking, you know, a grown man's car, like you gotta be, you know, uh, um, really prepared to defend yourself. Uh, do you uh, agree with uh, agree with that statement? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you know, when I grew up racing short tracks in South Florida, you had to respect that that older guy because if you didn't, he's he was gonna. I mean, he's gonna wreck you. Yeah. You know I mean? And he's going to come down to your pits and he's going to let you know that, that you did something wrong. He's basically going to whip your ass, right? <laughs> I mean, he would tell you he's going to whip your ass. But, he, you know, they, they wouldn't for sure, you know, just because, you right. know, they, they've got common sense. But, but I mean, you, that's how I learned. I'm like, man, I, you can't mess with those guys. It's just a respect level, mm. you know. And, and, I mean, everybody's got to race hard, but sometimes you just got to lift a little bit to – to gain that respect, you know, down the road, that guy might lift and, and let you in. So okay. it's, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a little, little rough around the edges. I, I miss that a little bit about NASCAR. I, I wish, you know, people would get out and throw helmets and things like that. No, push each know. other. Around. I'd rather, I'd rather see them throw, you know, fists than helmets to be honest with you. Oh, <laughs> It'd be more sure. entertaining. Oh, yeah. It'd be more, much more entertaining oh. that way. <laughs> all all oh, yeah. I'll say is if you want to see some of that, just come on down to Tazel Speedway sometime in Tazel, Tennessee, and you'll get a little taste of that. Yeah, he keeps hyping that Speedway oh, yeah. up. I definitely got to check you, that you, out. You, you gotta, you, you're all coming someday. Yeah, definitely, for sure. One final jo- fan jo- question. Jo- oh, oh, go ahead. Jo- go ahead. Josh, if anyone ever gives you an opportunity to go drive a dirt light model there, you got to. You'd probably love it. Yeah, sounds, sounds come on really with fun. It. Yeah, it sounds really if fun. If it's got four wheels on it, I'll drive it. So. Oh, see, that's <laughs> see, that's a racer right there. That's what I like to hear. All right, one final fan question. Um, so what are your plans for 2021? Do you even know yet? Can you even say? What's the deal? I, I'm just kind of a, a year-by-year deal. You okay. know? So uh, it's it, this whole sport revolves on sponsorships and – you know, we're, we've put some some really good deals together this year, and, and we've created a lot of partners, and we're still growing, and, and we're still finding uh, new sponsors and different people. So, um, I mean, I'm not sure where it's going to take me. Probably, probably September or something like that, or or maybe even at home there. Well, I guess Phoenix. Sorry, maybe at yeah. Phoenix. You know, we'll we'll know a little bit more. So it's uh, kind of 
I don't know. It, it sometimes it sucks not knowing what you're doing, but and then you know at that point you just got to drive as hard as you can because you, you never know what's going to happen. Oh yeah, so absolutely. No slack. Yeah, I feel you. I feel on that. Well, if you ask me personally, I mean, you're close to that playoff cut line. So if you ask me, I I would have resigned you already, man. Don't uh, definitely don't want to let you go anywhere for sure. Well, we are uh, approaching the 15 minute mark. Josh Williams, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, you know, catch him in the doubleheader at Kentucky on Thursday and Friday. Uh, before you leave, Josh, where can the fans find you on social media? I tell you what, uh, the, if you want to uh, interact with me a little bit, check out my Twitter, okay. uh, Josh Six Williams. That's probably the best place. And uh, you know, once you get on there, follow all my sponsors, Alloy Financial, Sleep Well. All of those guys are going to be on the car this weekend. So uh, huge thanks to them, and uh, make sure you turn on them TVs. We need some good ratings. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, not going to hold you up too much longer. Thank you so much, Mr. Williams. You have a good one, and good luck tomorrow. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Anytime, just give me a shout. Yes, sir. Yes, Thank sir. you. Thank you. You have a good one. Thank you. See you, guys. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> See, that was cool. See, that's why I love talk, talking to the underdogs in the sport. They're so, you know, down to earth. They're so wholesome. You know, Josh Williams, I mean, what you see is basically what you get, you know. I mean, some of these higher profile guys, it's like, you know, like, like you know, they – they end up giving you, uh, uh, giving you the uh, you know the whole meh you know type answers, but you know Josh Williams you know just a straight up guy, and he's not the only one we'll have on. Tommy Joe Martins will be on at the top of the hour, so hope you guys enjoyed that inter- that 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 interview. So <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm so excited. I don't know, just always. Uh, it's been a while since I've hosted the podcast on here, so I got to get used to you know being in the whole host mode here. So. All right, so let's get the uh, the actual show started. Uh, Jarrett, what do we have on tap for tonight? Uh, we got we got a lot. Um, real quick, if people see me fidgeting around behind the camera and stuff, the uh, after a few weeks off, the battle with the flies has reemerged. Uh, so <laughs> it's not the only battle you have to deal with in that garage. There's heat, the fan, and uh, uh, fan. it's not that bad. Yeah, not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's, not that bad. It, it's it's still pretty good. But uh, yeah, I guess we can look at the uh, Indianapolis weekend overall. That was pretty damn fun. Oh yeah. Uh, but the, the the Xfinity race is my favorite part of the weekend, man. Like those last finished. eight laps, fantastic. Oh, that yeah, was sure. oh, I love it. I love it, man. Um, I don't have the like a bunch of stuff pulled up for for that race, but I know like the Cup race, like the Cup race. In my opinion, the Cup race was the weakest part of the weekend, in in my opinion. But I do think the Xfinity race was the strongest part, like without a doubt. There, I don't think there's any way somebody can be like, nope, nope. Indian Cup were way better than than the Xfinity race. I, that race was great and just the, there were like five cars under a blanket with two or three to go. I mean, yeah. what more can you ask for with it? And the fact that they all had a chance to win too was the best part. And the fact that Briscoe looked like I mean he didn't have it in the bag. I think most people would say AJ Allmendinger and Austin Cindric's probably the slightly better road course racers, but Briscoe certainly learned a lot on the mm-hmm. fly from all his time working with Ford. But so you got the impression that he was kind of holding them up at the end there. But even when he made that mistake and they got by, he didn't let them get away. And when they started racing each other, that three wide move going into turn one, that's gonna be like if if Chase Briscoe goes on one day to win a bunch of cup races, goes to the Hall of Fame one day, that pass three wide going into turn one will be on his hall of fame highlight reel. I mean, that's going to be on his career highlight reel regardless, mm-hmm. but I'm telling you, he could go on to do great, great things. It's not going to get much better than that move right there. Cause I just didn't see that coming. I, I, the way he'd given up the lead before, I just didn't see him staying in that battle, but that's what made those last seven, eight laps extremely interesting. I agree with you. I think the, the uh, Xfinity race was the, from start to finish, especially the finished most entertaining race of the weekend. I think the cup race, I think, a lot of people are still scarred from like, I think it was 2016 was the year. It was just an awful, just nobody yeah. snooze fest of a race. But since 2016, 2017 was a crash fest, but at least it had some <laughs> exciting moments. 2018, 2019 were okay. And I think this year's again was pretty decent. I mean, you can't pass uh, when once everyone gets strung out, or at least it's, it's hard to pass. I'm not going to say it's like Pocono, the first Pocono last year where you literally couldn't, you could yeah. pass in this race, but it was hard. And the closer you got to the front, it was more and more difficult. So it was a track position race, but the tire failures, they felt a little random, and that was frustrating. But when you kind of look back at it, you think, you know, 
two, you know, two of the four Gibbs cars, blue tires, two of the four Hendrick cars, blue tires, none of the SHR cars, blue tires and Harvick went on to win the race. So I think it was setups came into play and some of the teams hit on it. Other teams didn't. This is a race where practice would have definitely come into play and, and help some guys out. So race had some memeable moments, the pit road wreck, which thankfully Ryan Blaney's crew member is, I mean, I, I guess we still don't know crazy. what he, we don't he know the extent of his injury, but he has a fractured leg, okay. fractured leg. It oh, could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse, yeah. though. That, that could have been so much worse. For, uh, quite a few weeks, but oh, by the way, yeah. Danny B's packing. By the way, guys, we have Bristol, <laughs> Bristol next week. So packing during the show. <laughs> yeah, that's like the first. <laughs> How much do you have to pack that you can't uh, like? Uh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Darian just read my message wrong, yeah. so I'm just gonna clarify. Okay, okay. Happening. Before the show, I've been packing and I've bent over to get something. My lower back is now in a lot of pain, so I'm sorry. If, if y'all know what, y'all seen the chair I have, I'm just laying back and, well, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know if y'all want to see the way I'm just doing this podcast right now. Mm. Did I didn't even see that. I, 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 I feel bad. Do. <laughs> Well, um, rest up. Put, get some ice on he, it. He, he, he's going to look like Principal, that Principal Skinner meme. I know. Just straight up just in the back, just like that, man. But I guess if we're going to talk, uh, if, if we're going to keep talking about the races, man, uh, first off, IndyCar, that was a good race, I'd say. You know, shout out to the one and only Colton Herta, fourth place run. Hey, fourth place. Yeah, man. good job. I mean, good job by him. Uh, Scott Dixon, man. Scott Dixon's on a roll, though, man. I mean, two for two already. The first time since Will Power all the way back in 2010. You have to go all the way back to 2010 uh, since uh, one of these IndyCar guys has won, you know, the first two races of that particular season. So Scott Dixon is definitely on a roll. Um, for Xfinity, though, man, I, I, that was an awesome race, too, man, from start to finish. Um, one of the funniest parts was uh, was uh, the 18 of Riley Herbst. He was pissed at the 7. was like, you can run in here for 15 years, and I guess you can do what you want. Like, I've never heard Riley so animated. I mean, I've heard him say, you know, like, blah, 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 and then Hannah Newhouse is like, what a douchebag. That's about it. But, I mean, yeah, yeah, y'all forgot, y'all about, forgot that. about that, huh? Yeah. But, <laughs> bring I mean, in that one from 2018. Yeah, gotta bring it back, oh, of course, boy. for sure. But, I mean... You know, the race overall, that was an awesome race for, you know, NASCAR on the Indy Road Course for the first time. No practice either, just straight up, like, hey, set the cars on the pit lane and let's just, you know, go green in about 10 minutes. That was cool. Uh, Chase Briscoe, I I mean, man, he is, it's hard to argue a case for him to move up to the Cup Series next year. I mean, 13 races in this season, five wins already, that's insane. I'll be honest, like last year, it was like the, the big three was really define the year. And, and I think that last year you could say it was Redick who, who right. was the defining driver. Yes, he won the championship, but even if he hadn't, people were always remembering Tyler Redick, Tyler Redick, Tyler right. Redick. Um, I think so far this year, that's Chase Briscoe. I mean, you look yeah. just two moments alone, you can look at him winning at Darlington, beating out Kyle Busch, especially after uh, what he had to go through before that and then that three wide pass to indianapolis right now i think this is briscoe's year at the moment i think it's his championship at this time to lose I mean, like i don't i don't see anyone else who is all around in any uh big way better than him and that team right now yeah it's definitely his championship to lose that's for sure man because i mean i can't remember off of the top of my head like you know one of these xfinity guys really just dominating the whole season really since uh, if we're going to go back, Martin Truex Jr., 2004, 2005, I mean, I know he had some competition, but, like, I mean, in those races, he was always the top dog in these days. And, like, when we watch these Xfinity races, it's like, you know damn well Chase Briscoe, if he's not going to compete for the win, he will he will at least be in position to strike if, you know, the leader messes up. So we've seen this all over the, you know, we've seen this before. But, again, you know, if, if Cole Custer... Christopher Bell, if those are any cases, you know, um, the cases that, you know, Xfinity and the Cup Series, two totally different beasts. I mean, Tyler Reddick seems to be the only one who's kind of getting the hang of it, you know, early on. But even Tyler Reddick is sitting on the outside looking in when it comes to the playoffs. So, um, you know, the days of, you know, these rookies just automatically coming in and winning like that, those are long gone. So, I feel like driver development has changed tremendously, you know, over the years. Um, you know, whether Chase Briscoe lands, you know, one of these store hot, you know, uh, uh, one of these store hot rides, uh, rides, I don't know yet. So we'll have to wait and see. As far as the Cup Series is concerned, um, you know, you, you guys know my thoughts on Indianapolis when it pertains to NASCAR on the on the oval. You know, 
Josh Williams was just in here. He was basically saying, you know, talking about the, you know, the whole tradition of it. You know, um, I'd say me and Jarrett are kind of like, meh, kind of, you know, just we've gone away. You know, we definitely strayed away from that whole, oh, yeah, the Brickyard, you know, 400 tradition, blah, blah, blah. As he, you know, he's sipping his tea right now or he's sipping his water right now, I guess. Jarrett is. But, you know, I, I mean, I wasn't really expecting much. And the race played out exactly as I thought it would until everyone started blowing tires and you know that's where practice would have came into full effect there you know because obviously the whole weight distribution on these cup cars was so out of whack you started seeing guys blowing tires i never expected denny hamlin to blow that tire there though i thought okay he has this race in the bag and then bam just freaking go straight into the wall and i gotta be honest that scared the hell out of me because if you go back to talladega 2008 he had a much similar crash that actually knocked him out and uh, he actually had to uh, come to in the hospital. So I don't know if you guys remember that, but I was thinking of that, and I was thinking, okay, put the window net down, and then he just caught his breath, and then boom, you know, he's, he's all right. So thank God for safer barriers. But, you know, it's still the Harvick Kenseth show this year. That's what it is right now. Ben Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. No, I messed that up. I was just about to talk about Kenseth. My bad. No, no, I'm sorry. Well, no, no. Uh, Eric, Eric wishes it was that show. Yeah, he wishes it was that show. There's I'll, still time. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick up kind of on what, what you are talking about yeah, there. Go ahead, go ahead. This package, in a lot of respects, like restarts and mile and a half, is a, definitely improves the racing. But I think that these bigger tracks with – really flat corners like Pocono and Indianapolis. Like it just, you see when they get spread out, like the big downsides of it. Yeah. Like you saw Ken, Kenseth had the fastest car on track at the end of that race. Mm -hmm. And he, and he was actually beside Harvick, but he couldn't get by just because of how the car stall out with the runs like that. And, and it sucks seeing that too, because one, one, it, it sucked with all the tire stuff. No, you know, that, that wasn't, good at all i don't like seeing any of that but even if you add that in kenseth in my opinion should have been long gone ahead of hamlin and harvick at the end of that race they had the right strategy going uh and strategies for the most part during the race were pretty good uh i was i was pretty interested by that but just that it's something that's always been sticking with me about it's frustrating. this it, it's really it, frustrating. it's it's with the bigger flat tracks mm -hmm. Um, like I said, the, the intermediate ones, a mile and a half, I'd say are, are better, uh, especially the restarts. It's just, and, and the restarts of this race were pretty good too. Like when, when they would start drafting, go three, four wide, making these, these awesome moves. That was really yeah. fun. I just say that it, Indianapolis is definitely more of a long run track, the same way that Pocono is. And it's just the way that this package is made, isn't suited for this type of track. If we had the, I guess the whole 2014 package, Kenseth would have, you know, swooped by even and well i mean oh yeah oh yeah. Uh, go ahead go ahead i was saying but say like even i'll be honest even the 20 the 2014 package you know like everyone rants and raves about it but even that wasn't too hot it oh yeah, yeah. It, had it's flaws. it had its flaws yeah um I, I i because sometimes it's just with indianapolis it's like you there's just a certain setting you know that it's like okay this is going to be crazy like 2017 mm -hmm. Or, you know, there's going to be like a really good battle at the end between two drivers like Harvick and Stewart in 2007. I saw that race that, uh, that NASCAR put up. That was a good race. Um, it just sometimes it's just not going to hit on it. You know? And I think that's that's what this race was. It wasn't like a dumpster fire terrible like 2016 or 2008. Um, but I definitely say it was definitely one of the weaker races of this uh, this season you know these whole start times there's always some sort of madness and you know when you know the race got you know when uh when you know nascar was having these lightning delays i knew that this race like something was about to go down like i was getting a lot of 2017 vibes i was looking at jared's tweet i'm like yep exactly i'm getting a lot of 2017 brickyard vibes right now but you know back to the whole point situation ran right now i mean it's not the, well, let's exclude, uh, uh, what's his name, Kenseth out right now. But um, Hamlin and Harvick, man, they are just, I, I don't know, man. They are just on a roll right now. Dude. They're the I favorites. Mean, right I mean, now. they're definitely the favorites, man. I mean, if I have to make, you know, lock picks for the final four, Hamlin and Harvick are definitely, you know, the top two. Who's going to be third and fourth? I don't, I don't really know yet. I mean, it seems like, you know, those two are in their own world and then like everyone else is just like below here or, you know, trying to approach to that world. But man, I, I mean, Harvick, you know, since this whole, you know, since the, you know, the whole, you know, uh, season restart 
has just been on a roll, and so is Hamlin. Um, I mean, can can you guys think of anyone else in particular that's been kind of close to that level? Because I can't right now. I mean, the Penske cars at the beginning of the year look pretty good. This, other guys jump in from week to week. Like this week, it was Ken's that mm-hmm. looked close. Uh, but I think what's most notable, you think about Harvick and Hamlin. What's that sets them apart? I think arguably they have the two best crew chiefs yeah. in the NASCAR Cup Series that's with Chris true. Gabehart, who joined the 11 car last year. And since then, they've won about 20% mm-hmm. of the races. And then Harvick has Rodney Childers, who basically has turned Harvick into a Hall of Famer since he got to SHR. Harvick had the skill, but Rodney Childers has certainly yeah, not yeah. He uh, hurt him in any level. way. And I think about, you know, they've won the last three races now, the Hamlin uh, and Harvick split Pocono and then Harvick won Indianapolis. And think about those three races, those two tracks are often strategy tracks. And those are two, not only smart crew chiefs at setting up a race car, but also at kind of developing a race long strategy and keeping their drivers out front. Because both Pocono and Indy are track position tracks and you never saw the four or the 11 car lose the lead or lose the top three at any point in either of those races. So I think the crew chiefs deserve a lot of credit. And I think the reason you've seen uh, guys like Hamlin and Harvick run so well, specifically since the return, since the pandemic or since the hiatus uh, is because there's no practice. And I, I don't know how much this comes into play, but uh, you know, think about it, during like an hour long practice on Friday, another hour long practice on Saturday, all the teams have a chance to kind of fine tune some things. Crew chiefs talk to each other. Joe Gibbs crew chiefs talk to each other. SHR crew chiefs talk to each other. Right now, since everyone talks to each other during the week, but they do that. They always have done that. Now that everyone just shows up on Sunday and races what they got, there's no chance for, you know, Adam Stevens or Chris Gale to come over there and talk to Chris Gabar and be like, hey, what do you guys find on that 11 car? There's never a chance because the race is happening. They're already halfway through the race. You got to make it up as you go along. And I think that has lended itself to the best crew chiefs in the garage. That's why we've also seen the Penske cars like uh, uh, Joey Logano with he's with Paul Wolf this year, I believe. Yep. And, and Blaney with Todd Gordon. I think those crew chiefs are really good as well. And we've seen them run up near the front as well since the pandemic most consistently. And, and I think it's honestly, if you look at the results since Darlington, I think a lot of it lies at the feet of the crew chiefs. And right now, Hamlin and Harvick have probably the best relationship with their crew chiefs. And I think that's what's showing up on the track each week. Most oh, yeah. Most, most, and they, most definitely. They, well, and speaking of crew chiefs, they talked a little bit, I think, during either the pre-race or the main broadcast about with Chad Canals. Uh, and one thing that he talked about that's really thrown him for a loop is the fact that he hasn't been able to be in the uh, back in the shop working mm-hmm. with any of the guys for, I think, three, four months now. Uh, and and they were saying, I think it was Dale Jarrett might have said that it's like it's not the same Chad Canals. You can hear that doubt in his voice right now. And I think I think it's like like you were saying, it's testing who the better crew chiefs are. And I think it's really testing not only their knowledge mechanically, but also I think their overall confidence and, and psyche with it yeah. um, because you see like some teams like started off this uh this comeback and it's like they were setting the world on fire sticking right up there with harvick and hamlin sometimes beating them but now you know for instance like the hendrick cars have started to fall off um so it, it i i'm really interested moving forward when there seems to be a bit more of a it, it seems there's a bit more of a rhythm now to what they do they you know they know what they're going to be doing, where everyone has to be during the weekend or the, the day of the race, whatever uh, they have to do. I'm going to be really interested to see who finally just starts clicking and hitting on it and and fires up to the front like we were talking about. Could be Kyle Busch, could be Chase Elliott, could be someone we're not even thinking of right now. I mean, look at Eric Almarola. I think he has five straight Quinn top Hoof. fives right no, now. No, I'm playing. <laughs> no, not clear. <Quinn. laughs> yeah, no, um, but but Eric Almarola, I think he has five top fives right now, and they're at some of his worst tracks. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that should honest. scare the competition. He mm-hmm. shot up the ranks. Yeah, there was the some last talk last races. month, like, Eric Almarola is one of the most disappointing. He must have heard us because he skyrocketed his performance, man. He's not going to take it anymore. Mm-hmm. There's a weird been, stat that literally said he was the least productive driver mm-hmm. in his equipment up until about a month ago. <laughs> yeah, so Avery, that has enough. certainly changed at some point by now. Oh, yeah. We've also been, I guess for the last few weeks, we've been on very, very different, unique tracks where we're, we're about to go on a little bit of a run of kind of like these, you know, the mile and a half tracks again. And they kind of favored teams like like Hendrick. So maybe they'll, they'll kind of have a little few weeks of resurgence. You know, this would be an opportunity for, you know, maybe, maybe Byron to run well and, and Bowman and Johnson and you know, potentially get to 24 and 48 to win this season. Yeah, we'll see what happens. You know, I really do think Hendrick does it. have potential, and especially Johnson definitely needs it to secure a playoff spot now, you know, after his whole, his his little hiatus. We'll talk about that later. 
but it's, it's still got it right now yeah. but. oh yeah he still got it he still got it just you know just you know bad bad deal last week that's for sure i guess the final thing i want to touch up on you know for the uh during the race weekend um you know the whole pit crew and you know the whole uh pit road in, uh incident right there that uh that happened you know I gotta be honest with y'all, that really scared the hell out of me. I mean, at first, I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at these cards, look at these cards, man, oh my gosh, like, all of them started, you know, crashing each other, and then, and then out of nowhere, NBC, uh, NBC shows the shot of, of, you know, of one of Blaney's crew guys basically getting his leg caught up in the whole car. I'm like, look, I've been hit by a car before, way back in middle school, I was in, you know, I was in the crosswalk, I was, I was riding my bike, and then this lady, like, she stopped, and then she just, just rammed it, I'm like, oh! god like my arm and all this stuff like it's just it was it was a bad deal so i can't imagine getting my freaking leg you know pinned in between two gigantic race cars and these race cars weigh well over 3500 pounds it is insane you know what i mean like so i i mean i gotta ask what were your guys' thoughts on that i mean should it should roger penske look into maybe expanding that pit road a little bit can, can i ask just one question yeah why are we just now finding out the story? You I can't believe I never told y'all this. Yeah, it was, story like, it was in middle school. Yeah, yeah, it was in middle school a long time ago. Yeah, and then and then out of nowhere, the lady wanted me. Um, um, uh, oh, excuse me. The lady wanted to drive me to school, and then I'm like, no, get the hell off, get, like, get off me. No, no, no. We're calling the cops. <laughs> like, we're calling the cops. There. It's uh, like Moon, Moonhead said in the chat. I've been hit by a car before. Things I did not expect to hear on the podcast. Yeah, no, it, 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 was, it was a crazy. Well, I'm deal. Laughing. And then and then my mom called me, and then she was talking to my mom. And then she was telling my mom, I'll take you, I'll, I'll take him to school. And then my mom was cussing her out like, hell no, no, no. We're calling the cops and all that stuff. I like, just, of course. I love, I love seeing the chat just blow up about it. Like when Darian's experienced everything. <laughs> says Josh, I, Like y'all can't see me, but I just sat there with my eyes open. Like, wait, what did you say? Long time ago, long time ago. <laughs> Eric, uh, Eric Marsh is. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your last name. It says bad seasons, Darian's middle school year. I think this was eighth grade too. Uh, like my little well, brother was to, there, to, and then my one of my best friends was there too. To, to be fair, to be fair, I think everyone's middle school years were bad seasons. So. Y'all didn't get hit by a car, <laughs> oh man. I, and the, and they reeked of axe. Anyway, um. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um. Ahead, so when it, when it comes to the whole deal with with the pit roads, I think there's like two things to look at here. Uh, one is Indy pit road is insanely narrow like i think they said it was 24 feet wide and the average cup car is like i i can't remember the exact measurements but i think it's somewhere between 16 and 18 feet long so a car just if the car gets turned sideways on indy's pit road there's nowhere to go as we saw um you can change that and i think it's something that that needs to be talked about i remember uh, i brought up something the other day like how i think Dale Jr. and a few other older drivers were like complaining about it and how like it's made for indie cars. We can't get the stock cars through here. And mm -hmm. and they're like, ah, just shut up. You're just complaining. It's like <laughs> they kind of had a point, yeah. you know, uh, at the same time, I think part of it too was with, with a competition caution like that, especially so early in the event and everybody coming down pit road in that moment, it's just so much congestion oh, yeah. caused. And, and, yeah. and you look at, the way that they had to decide the pits and everything. And just so you had really good drivers uh, in the back, leaving the pits at the same time as these other drivers are coming in. I mean, you have that always in general, but you had a little more this week. Uh, I think NASCAR at the very least for the, the pandemic should at least look at maybe changing the procedures with competition cautions. Maybe uh, I wouldn't say like a major yeah. break when may splitting the field, you know, you keep, you retain your position, first 20 go in, then second 20 go in, maybe something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because you can't just, you know, I, I know it's, it, it sounds easy, like, oh, we'll change Indy's pit road. But I mean, that's, that's got to cost millions yeah, and millions of dollars. You got to change millions. the front stretch itself. And more they just likely. renovated and, the track too, as well. Well, mm -hmm. and, it, and it bottlenecks a little bit mm -hmm. going in too. Right. That's the, the thing people forget too. Uh, I'd say that NASCAR just look at especially tracks with either shorter pit roads or narrower pit roads do something about the competition caution uh what do you call it straight uh, not strategy but uh, procedure procedure. Um, procedure there we go do something about that procedure uh i mean if it, if, if it were a perfect world for me i'd say get rid of competition cautions altogether. Mm -hmm. we just you know you'll, you'll find out when your first pit stop comes along but i, I know nascar won't do that let's just go to a 20 mile per hour speed limit 
Oh my god! You know, back let's in the just, day, they had no speed limit, and look how that turned out. Let's just let the drivers yeah, we had get out of their cars and push their cars in neutral down pit road to right. their stop. Yeah. Would you say Jerry like, had a what? Yeah, we kind of had a uh, Ryan Blaney crew incident that ended that. Yeah. Because it went a little bit worse. Yeah. Um, way well, that's an understatement. There, way way worse, of course, but yeah, for that. Yeah. But um, uh, so yeah, that'll do it for the well, indie weekend, I guess. Yeah, we got stuff. Wait, we got, we got more stuff. stuff? More stuff about Indy? Well, we got ratings and polls. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, the polls. That's uh, right. Really quick, really quick. Uh, uh, oh, oh yeah, because according to some person, the, the ratings are an all-time low. Yeah, we'll get for... into yeah, that. We'll get into that really quick. Let me yeah, address some of these super chats really quick. 250 P, uh, P, 53 people watching. Oh, my goodness. 53 people watching. Only 94 likes. Make sure... To lick the like button, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, really quick, we're gonna get into some super chats, and holy crap, not just some. We got a yeah, bunch a membership of them. chat. Oh yeah, and oh yeah, membership there too. And uh, really quick, thank you so much, GN, for becoming the eighth member ever of the channel. Really appreciate it. Um, and he's the first super chat. Uh, thank you for the five bucks. Watch it be dry and sunny for the Daytona road course race, and then a hurricane will come and hit the Coke Zero 400 in August. Jared, we were talking about that a long time ago when the schedule came out. You were like, well, it is in the middle of hurricane season. So. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued with what that sandstorm did, and they said it pushing everything back a week or two. I'm like, yeah. I'm intrigued Like if that'll push that stuff away for Daytona, since it'll be like, because a week or two before is good, mm. like based on trends. Uh, based on the trans, um, so I'm I'm wondering what that's going to do. Uh, I I might have to take a deeper look at that moving forward. Yeah, we'll see. Zach, thanks for the for the two dollars there, bro. Uh, cheese, that's it. That's all he said. Thank you. I appreciate the comment. Uh, on the cheddar with his cheese, monster or Havarti? Uh, I don't I don't know. He just said cheese there, folks. I got no clue. And then uh, Derek Cope. Well, this is a fake Derek Cope account. Thank you for the uh, for the two uh, for the two dollars there. Uh, a gift from uh, from from Quinn Half and myself. Thank you, fake Derek Cope. I really <laughs> appreciate it. Jordan, thank you for the ten dollars super chat. How do I get on these podcasts? I'm like an excite an, an encyclopedia of knowledge. Besides that, uh, would you support getting rid of some of these tracks or races that don't draw in a large audience? Well, first off, there, Jordan, we do do fan streams from time to time. I don't know when the next one is going to be, so be on the lookout for that. Number one and number two, when it comes to getting rid of some of these tracks, well. Um, to be honest, it's all about the television money. So as long as they rack in that television money and stuff, I really don't see them getting rid of like you know any tracks well, in particular. Wasn't wasn't there something that came out though earlier this year that said that I was that was this is before COVID happened, but it was talking about how NAS like at some point NASCAR or somebody might be holding tracks to like a certain amount of fans that they have to get in. Like a certain standard or certain standard where it's like, yeah, hey, I, um, I can't, there yeah. was, no, it, no, no, there it, was. It's been, there so was. Long, it's been so long, but I think there was something that was kind of addressed. There was that. something yeah. about that earlier in the year. Um, I mean, obviously with the whole, you know, COVID uh, situation happening. Um, yeah. I completely forgot about that too, until you just brought it up. So we'll have to wait and see if they still stick by that or, you know, in the meantime, they're like, well, We'll um we'll have that taken to effect maybe you know sometime down the line so we'll have to wait and see. Beast of Metal, I see you all the time on the dumpster fire. Really appreciate the twenty dollars there, buddy. Darian saw part one of um um of my Gustinson sucks rant last night. Yeah, I remember that. So I'm just going to add one more thought here. He only has the record uh, he does because of the driving talent he has worked with. And his 2008 season is true form. Oh, damn. He, so basically, Beast of Metal is saying, um, you know, because of all the talent he has had, you know, Kyle Busch, Jeff Gordon, uh, you know, Mark, Mark Martin, Martin. etc., And also, you know, Chase Elliott now. Um, he's talking about 2008 when he had Casey Mears, who has been pretty average his whole, his, his entire career. Um, I don't know. I kind of have to disagree with you there. Look, Mark I, Martin disagrees. Yeah, yeah. Mark Martin said on the podcast <laughs> last course, week that Alan Gustafson was like basically the main catalyst that helped bring him back to you know a a championship level season. That's what he said. Chris, you ask you ask Mark Martin, and he's he's not as good as any of his season show. And it's always the the he's he's just well the he's awesome. He's, he's awesome. awesome. He's definitely he's awesome. awesome. He's humble. 
I love it. Yeah, but uh, basically awesome. Mark Martin like gives him full credit, so you got to take that up with him. Uh, Derek Cope, uh, with thank you for the uh, two dollar separate chats. Really appreciate it. Um, the first one is I'm on a budget until Quinn starts winning races. <laughs> It's gonna be a while before that happens. I actually, oh. I, I like Quinn. I like Quinn. He gets a lot of disrespect, though. I don't get it. He's he's doing his best. He's doing his best. We'll see what hey, happens. Hey, we, we, we gotta like his pit crew, though. Yeah, yeah, we like his pit crew. Oh, definitely. Yes, Tigger. We love Tigger in this household. And then the second one is, oh my gosh, Chris Fontaine to drive the double zero in 2021 for Starcom. <laughs> so you have the fake Derek Cope announcing that the fake Chris Fontaine is gonna drive for him. That's spectacular. So be on the lookout for that. And then GN, the brand new channel member thank you for the two dollars i'm throwing major red flags if i'm an 18 fan right now oh yeah yeah oh damn what does that mean i i don't get it the means reference. he hasn't won in, in oh in, oh yeah duh, that's right that's right yeah he hasn't yeah. won this year it yeah, means he hasn't be, won this year. be concerned be very concerned yeah damn what is yeah this what is, is up with Kyle? this is a, yeah. well this is amazing though that he has i think six or seven top fives and people like in 16 races and people are like What's wrong? It reminds like that shows me, how good he is. It reminds oh. me of Jeff Gordon's 2002 season. Remember, bad season, but then he finished third in the standings. Like what? <laughs> I think reminds me more of his 08. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. 2008 was like more. 08 or, or 10, just because it's like Kyle Busch has had chances of winning and just stuff goes wrong. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, I think it has. A lot <coughs> Ryan to Blaney. Do with, yeah, Ryan Blaney definitely. <laughs> I think it has a lot to do with you know there being no practice. I think he's even commented mm -hmm. on that to a certain extent. So we'll wait and see what happens with him. Uh, two more. Uh, oh, the fake Chris Fontaine. Thank you for the 99 cents. No, um, no comment. That's it. And then finally, yes. The one and only Scion44, dude. If you are a fan of the TM Master Cup, of the old TM Master Cup Series races, you are definitely one of the OGs in this community. Thank you, th uh, thank you for the ten dollars, man. His comment: Road America and Road America. Or, oh, oh, hold on, I read it wrong. Road America and Road Atlanta deserve cup dates what about no Cleveland? one cared about road atlanta until like a week ago like i get road <laughs> nobody was talking about road atlanta until they're like oh we're going to road courses well, well, well scion well, to be fair though scion has been very consistent for years now about road atlanta I've okay seen his comments i give on there. okay then i give him credit but some of these people like yeah. i've been talking road atlanta for 20 years it's like, it's you, like didn't yeah. yeah, it. you didn't even hear about it you didn't even <laughs> you didn't even hear about it until like a week ago. And then his, uh, and then the rest of his comments are, what about Cleveland? Ohio has a lot of motorsports fans, and the airport hosted IROC in 1990. Yeah, a lot of talk about returning, you know, to the, you know, to the famous Cleveland airport. IndyCar raced there for years. Well, well. Thank you, Slapshoes, for starting this. Cart, cart did. Yeah, yeah, Slapshoes started all that. So I would love to see those. We'll have to wait and see what happens with that. But, Every um, week when we look at the ratings, like Cincinnati is always really high as like a hot NASCAR market, mm -hmm. which I'm always like, wow, okay. So I know it's not Cleveland, but it's, you know, it's Ohio. It's close it's, enough. It's when, close when enough. You, when you have the Reds and the Bungles in your city, you got to have something you sports have that goes right. Man. Yeah. Well, well um, apparently on the dumpster fire, the Cincinnati Reds are apparently competing this year. I'll believe it when I see it. But uh, they've, been, they've been saying they're <laughs> competing since 2008. Well, I know. They, they never compete. They, they compete for last. Oh, Them and the Pirates. And then the Bengals, that's a whole nother story. Uh, hopefully, uh, they're, uh, you're, they're the Bungles. Uh, yeah, the Bungles, definitely the Bungles. Yeah, that's for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm just over here very neutral on baseball, just uh, unless this rumor is true that Nashville's getting a major league team. So. Yeah, we'll see what happens with that. But anyways, that'll do it for the Super Chats. And of course, lick the like button. Okay, Jarrett, let's get to the famous poll, the famous iceberg poll. What are the stats on that poll? Well, it's a new record. Uh, a new a poll new record! record! Let's go. What what, what is it now? 7.8 thousand votes. Ooh, uh, wow. 16 percent of you thought that this race was great. Fifty four percent thought that it was good. Twenty one percent haven't made a decision. Uh, Five percent below average. Five percent bad. Net negativity ten percent. Net positivity seventy percent. Damn, it's been a while. That since does it's been not like add up. Damn, that does not add up. Those percentages don't add up. Uh, so thank you, YouTube, for being drunk. Again. Damn, YouTube's been drunk all week, man. <laughs> Uh, let's see uh i won't i won't go too many uh comments here because we want to get into some stuff and make mm -hmm. sure we are clear for old time of joe martin's yes. when he's coming on in about That's 10 definitely. minutes um the great senator 21 denny checkered flag here i come blows tire <laughs> daryl oh mick hamlin's blowing a tire uh -huh. harvick's crew chief 
Mick Hamlin's blown a tire. Mick Hamlin's blew a tire. Go, 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 go. go, go, go. Only this time, no. him, uh, Harvick ended up winning. Yeah, Chick yeah. Hicks in the real movie didn't. <laughs> um, actually, it didn't he at the end? Well, yeah, at the end, at the end. But, like, oh. McQueen let Man, him I don't win, even like. I don't even <laughs> like cars, and I knew this. McQueen uh, anyway. let him win. <laughs> Our uh, nation's rolling in his grave. Yeah. <laughs> J.R. Smith said, that was painful. I really wanted Matt to win. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. We all wanted him to win too. He still got second, though. Still got second. So not bad. Not bad. It, it was good seeing him up front. I was. Mm-hmm. I was really happy with that. Yeah. Um. Let's see. <laughs> what incarnation? The chaos of 2017 with the tire failures of 2008. <laughs> <laughs> the best of yeah, worlds. Uh. Let's see. I'm trying. I'm trying to see. Oh. <laughs> Miguel says tires.exe has stopped working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a bad deal. How many how many tire failures did we have this weekend? Like five? <laughs> at, Probably at least half a dozen. six, I think. Wow. Damn, you gotta go back to indie It's the, I think it's the that. high I think it's the setups and the high corner speeds. Yeah, yeah. I, that's I think it. that's what I don't it think is. it has anything to do with the tires, but of course Graham Rahal, you know, one of the uh, premier indie car drivers, was like, Well, thank goodness we have Firestone to you know, um, in in IndyCar, and I'm like, damn, just throwing major shade at Goodyear. Tony yeah, Tony Stewart sitting there, like I would, I told them I'd be quiet. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not like, like we just won. I'll just stay silent. <laughs> you know what? I kind of, I kind of would love to see a situation because, look, I think there was one time when when you had both Hoosier and Goodyear in NASCAR yeah, the tire and, war, mm. and we we had multiple manufacturers, and I would love to see, you know a time when multiple tire companies can be involved, you know, get, get general tire, get Goodyear, get Bridgestone, get lots of people involved. I think it would be really fun to see that come back. But hopefully we don't have, you know, all of the, uh, all of the, of, uh, of the, we, uh, the chaos that went around, you know, with we, uh, the whole tire war deal. We have Mike Harmon's Wikipedia page, copy oh, and pasted. So oh good God, job. of course, of course. There's only um, a matter of time before that happened. Oh, this is so true. Uh, Eric, there's a lot of Eric's commenting. Eric uh, <laughs> Katozi says, Matt Kenseth almost ended the Ma- the McDonald's curse. He did. Damn, he really did. That's right. They only have, what, two wins in NASCAR? And they're all by Mr. The Excitement. Last, the last one was Jimmy Spencer in 94. Yep. Uh, and, and then too. final comment, Jimbo Burrito, Bubba P9. Yep, he was P9. That was good. And then he called out that one idiot there. And I like that. I like that there, man. Just showing these people up. Like I don't, I can't remember what the dude's name was. He uh, ended up posting a video on Twitter. I don't know much about NASCAR, but uh, I've seen Talladega Nights. I'm like, all right, that's it, that's it. Click off the video. You don't know what you're talking about. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Don't be this, I guess that ignorant. Really quick, uh, before Tommy Joe gets in here, we could uh, finish off the indie talk. Um, mm-hmm. So the the race got a 2.67 rating with 4.343 million viewers. Definitely not the lowest of all time. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, so it was actually the top of the weekend, uh, mm. and the Xfinity and IndyCar races also were up. Uh, Indy, I, I, I think IndyCar, from what David Lance has been up 45%. 47%. Uh, in, in, percent. For, 47. That was They're big. in the 40s. That's mm-hmm. good. That's anyway, uh, reaction. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, it's. I still prefer, you know, 4th of July weekend at Daytona. That is never going to change, man. I grew up with it. I'm sorry. It's just never going to change. But, you know, this is this is pretty cool. You know, it's a pretty cool deal to have the, you know, all of, you know, these ratings go up potential. for this particular track. So, yeah, it does have potential. But if we're going to compare it to, you know, four, three years ago, mm, certainly not culpable, I don't think. I think Jarrett can probably elaborate on that a little bit more. Uh, I looked it up earlier. So, I okay. I saw the number of how far up it was from Daytona last year, but Daytona was also a rain out and (laughs) and rain shot. Yeah, rain. So I went back and I looked 2018, 2017, 2016, and 2018. Last time the Daytona race had the full race run, it was a 2.72 rating with 4.4 million. And then the years before were a 3.2 and a 3.4 rating and a 5.4 million and 5.7 million mm-hmm. viewers. I'm just like, I, I'm waiting a, a year or two before judging this just because I think we need to see a post-Rona mm-hmm. uh, 
NASCAR and see because because I, I think it was David that had said something that it you know IMSA is looking at jumping on board and they might have like a few other series that might want to come on and this could be something really big where it brings all of motorsports together mm -hmm. and that would be something really really cool and uh, it would be something really innovative and I'd be that'd be one thing I'd be okay with getting rid of the Daytona Fourth of July is if you did something brand new that is really good for all racing fans which is seemingly what Penske wants to do. Um, but I, I can't judge it just off of this year, especially since there were no fans at the track. And since we just have a completely different slate right now than what we would have a year ago and probably a year from now. Yeah. I think you can start to develop a little bit of an opinion once we see what um, the Daytona race at the end of August looks like. Cause that was my premise mm -hmm. a year ago when this news first break and why I was more or less in favor of the switch is because I don't, I don't know if you mentioned it a second ago, but in that initial you know report of ratings, um, yeah, while it was 46%, this year's Brickyard was 46% higher than the rain, rain out Daytona last year. It was, uh, it was also way up from uh, last year's Indianapolis race. Last year's Indianapolis race in September got less than 3 million viewers this year's, like you said, got almost four and a half. So that's a pretty huge boost in itself. So that, that was my thought when they moved Indy to the July 4th weekend is you make this an important race. You make this race now you boost the, you're going to boost the ratings for Indianapolis. So it's, I wasn't shocked to see Indy in July get better ratings than Indy in September. No. The question now is when they run Daytona in August, is it going to get similar ratings to what it was usually getting in July? And if it's way off, then maybe this is a failed experiment. But if it's similar or possibly even higher because it is the last race of the regular season now and there might be that added narrative to it, then that's why I think this will be a success because now you've effectively not changed the ratings. You really haven't hurt Daytona in any way, shape, or form. And now you've given a big boost to Indianapolis, a crown jewel race that desperately needed it. But you're right. It's hard to judge this year too heavily because – um, there's no fans in attendance. Yeah. And I think the biggest place Indy was struggling was with at track fan attendance mm -hmm. and moving it to July 4th weekend. I, I don't think there was any news about ticket sales that we didn't know if they were like Pocono, they had already kind of leaked that ticket sales were way up for the Pocono doubleheader before they had to you know run it without fans. I don't think we knew anything about Indianapolis or the Brickyard 400. So yeah, in that sense, you definitely have to wait a year to judge it, but I think you can start to get an idea of whether or not this is plausible going forward based off of what the, fan response and viewership is for daytona in a few weeks i'll be honest the the entire indie weekend looked normal to me no fans <laughs> for the uh for the sunday race i'm sorry man i'm sorry I made, bro, but uh, I, I made that joke yeah yeah he made that joke on twitter but, but i mean yeah, i'm, I'm good saying point, it, good point, though. if they're able to get multiple series into this weekend and make it something bigger than just nascar or indycar or imsa themselves i honestly think this could be I won't say it, it's not going to rival the Indy 500. No, That's just no. on another level. That's like saying, yeah, we're going to do something at Daytona and it's going to rival the Daytona 500. Never will. Um, it's just there, there's certain events that, you know, and this track is known for the Indy 500. But I think that to have a potential second weekend, this is, I think this is going to happen again. It wasn't originally scheduled, but I think this is happening again just because of the, the success that it, it was made into. Um, if they're able to do something where they can pull in consistent viewers, like if, if all sports and everything is relatively normal by this time next year and Indianapolis gets over, if it gets, if it goes flat and any, or even down to 4 million viewers, let's say, but it still stays above that four number, I'd say you've got something you can build on from this. Um, but if they start like raising the attendance and that place is half full, half full at Indianapolis is 170,000 people, you know, like that's that's huge mm -hmm. for modern nascar like we I'd, I'd say daytona the daytona 500 is probably the only race that maybe gets more if you count the infield and the grandstands so i i'm i'm actually kind of excited like I won't, I won't say i personally want them to move everything to the road course just make this the big road course weekend um i see people like ryan blaney and kevin harvick and and what josh was talking about earlier uh, i see their point definitely and, and and that's not to discredit them either when I say it like that. Like they're the drivers; they they know best how the car feels, what they would want. It's just at the same time, also what the fans want. But I, I'm t I'm actually somewhat hopeful for Indianapolis, and I got to say, Roger Penske so far amazing he's, job he's, so far. He's definitely delivered. You know, when it comes to both IndyCar and Indianapolis Motor Speedway, a ton of renovations in you know both the series and that track too man i mean he's definitely putting his money where his um, uh where his mouth is definitely he's definitely were, uh, putting in work 
And there were tons of fans, too, that were outside of the Speedway. Including Winval. Yeah. Winval tried Canes for the first time, and then I immediately DM'd him, like, hey, isn't it, isn't it, like, hella good? And he's like, oh, my gosh, it's amazing. It's like it's like home chicken. I'm like, yep, that's all right. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah, so that was cool. But I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, man. Um, you know, I, I personally think um, NASCAR is probably going to try and maybe go that route, and, you know, in, in particular the racetrack as well. I mean – if they were able to somehow get Formula One back to Indianapolis for, you know, like another edition of the U.S. Grand Prix, that would definitely lock in that weekend as like, just like, you know, the top echelon, you know, motorsports leagues, leagues literally around the world coming together for one weekend in the U.S. You know, that would definitely be a major selling point. And before Tommy Joe gets in, let's touch up on F1 for a little bit. I've definitely become a major F1 well, fan. We also had some Super Chats, too. Oh, we got more Super Chats. Damn, you guys are awesome. Oh, my goodness. Hold on. Let me pull them up really quick, guys. Refresh. So that that is cool. I really appreciate it. I just that. know because it's, it's 8 o'clock right now, so he'll be yeah. in any second. Oh, and yeah. Let me read these two. So really quick, the yeah. Fast Dane, thanks for the five bucks, buddy. His comment is, sad I can't go to Kentucky this year, but super stoked to be at Bristol. Oh, hey, you'll be at Bristol. Hey, um, nice. again. We'll see you up there. Um, I'll be the one in the in the Cincinnati Reds hat. <laughs> We were just talking. I'm, oh. I'm sorry. 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 We were uh, we were uh, roasting your team there. I'm sorry. It's just they just they're doing a lot of losing right now. I apologize, man. So, all right, just saying. And uh, uh, the the uh, the Los Angeles Rams are probably not going to be too far off. Let's be honest here. Um, I went to a Red games a Reds game once. It was, they, it was cool. They have a they have a loyal fan base. I dig it. I dig it. And then I tell you what, free Pete Rose. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He needs to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, definitely needs to be yeah. in there. It's been I bet. He, I bet. Yeah, I better put twenty on the Reds. <laughs> <laughs> Always got to go for the gut puncher there, Jared. I love it. And then <laughs> nah, that's I, more of a that's more of a crotch shot. Yeah, crotch shot. <laughs> and then the final super chat. I like bacon. Thanks for the two bucks. Who will get through the open? Okay, the open format for next week. That's uh, damn. We'll probably touch up on that before we head up to the racetrack. On Isn't you know, it like 25, 25, 10 or something? I thought it was 35, like 35, 35, 35. Yeah, so three 15. winners and then, and then the fan vote. First off, Bubba Wallace is you know locked to win the fan vote, I think, no matter what. See, I'm telling you, I, I, I mean this in no disrespect to Bubba, but NASCAR totally gave the results so far of the fan vote <laughs> just so they could get more media attention oh, for yeah, it. Oh, yeah, like, of course, trying, yeah. to milk like, it, trying to milk it. You know, they, the they, they are. Yeah. I, I, mean, I see I what they're doing. Them. I don't blame them trying to. I, I've right, been thinking so. for years they should have the order there just so it can become a race yeah. Um, yeah. overall. So, I mean, might as well there's, start there's, now. There's no, there's no real incentive. If you don't know how your favorite driver's looking, you're like, eh, I hope he gets in. Yeah, yeah, so you kind of have to hope. I'll tell you that. what, I knew I didn't have to vote for Junior the two years he was in the open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah, he can, he can probably crash and he'll get voted in. Or NASCAR will change the rules like they did in his farewell season to make sure he's locked in. Remember that? <laughs> to which he got eliminated yeah. right away. Oh, yeah, yeah, straight up, straight up. All right, and then the final super chat, I guess. Chris St. John, thank you so much for the ten up for the $10 there, buddy. Um, his comment, my buddies and I are starting a podcast in the coming weeks. Okay, okay, congrats, congrats. We, nice. I, I basically watch any sort of podcast. I love podcasts to death, so really, uh, that's, that's really awesome there, uh, Chris, congrats. Uh, between y'all and... D J D Dale Jr. Download. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Dale Jr. Download. You guys are a huge inspiration for us. Keep killing it, guys. We really appreciate that, man. Thank Definitely. You. Um, you know, last week Mark Martin was like, You guys are doing a lot. And then I'm like, Oh my god, Mark Martin just said that to us. That's awesome. But, you know, to hear it from fans, it's a much different story. Um, really appreciate it, man. Awesome, awesome. And uh good luck on on your guys' podcast too. Alright, so I sent Tommy Joe the link. He's still not here though, but it's all good. I feel like oh, this and is wait, what? really quick while, while, while we're waiting, oh my God. One. more super chats. Jeez, I never had to read. This gonna, be like, gonna be like gonna be like gonna be like Uncle Buck rolling oh, in the dough. Oh my goodness, rolling yeah, I'm gonna dough. be rolling in the dough after this. Uh, after this, that's for sure. Um, Con Formation 07. Thanks for the five bucks there. I need some Petty Blue Beats by Dre with the Petty Swoosh. Yes, yes, yes. I can't wait. For, for you know uh, to see what type of beats he's um, uh, they're gonna be selling um, I mean I got some beats on right now so I'm definitely gonna be buying some definitely can go with the uh, with the whole bubba beanie reason I'm wearing this beanie I have I have not had a single haircut in let's say 
three to four months so you know my hair is basically out of whack so i'm i'm getting it tomorrow though that's for sure so i was gonna say so i'm i'm gonna look flossy next weekend that's for sure i was gonna say it seems it's a little warm this time of year for a beanie but well, now it well, all makes I'll, sense i'll put it like this i'll put it like this it's a hundred and and three degrees outside right now but Gosh. in this in this apartment it's around 70 so it's like kind of cold in here so i kind of we're like below kinda we're worst. below 80 in here for the first time first since time. i've done a podcast <laughs> yes first time wow. ever in history that's great well that's it great. got it got up to almost 100 today so we're like oh it's gonna be hot yeah it's gonna, here. Be hot. it's gonna be hot as balls in that in that garage stall there that's for sure how's All the right. weather in tennessee danny we got to be prepared for when we yeah. get there how's it uh it's been kind of like Mostly sunny day. There was a little spotty shower about kind of midday, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it's it's pretty it's pretty warm. Kind of staying in the 90s. Actually, let's go actually. We're a week away, so let me check real quick. Oh wait, Danny, I saw the picture yeah. in the group chat. You were like, oh, I got just it. straight up like. Yeah, <laughs> I, no, I, I actually I, got I, the I, forecast I, right here. Uh, oh, okay. The 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 14th, 85. Uh, degrees, sunny, 25 percent uh, chance of precipitation. Uh, Wednesday, 91 degrees. Afternoon and evening thunderstorms, thirty percent chance, which means it's NASCAR, so you invert and it and it's a seventy percent chance. And I'm actually using an app from a weather from a station that's based in Knoxville, so it's more local. They are predicting for Wednesday, July fifteenth. High of 91, low 67, 10% chance of any precipitation. I'll go with that one instead. I'll go with that one. Yeah. I like hearing the difference. that. But this is NASCAR in 2020. So, so you got to invert it. So that's actually a 90% chance. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely going to be downpouring for sure. I don't know. Hopefully Bring not. your raincoats. We'll wait and see. I mean, me and, and as Jerry, soon as they call the race, the skies will open up. It'll be beautiful. The be birds like, will be chirping. Are you serious? Like what? Like, come on. Y'all can keep racing. Nope. Nope. That's, that's what it. happened. It's that's what happened in 2006 at Michigan when I was there. It was my first race. As soon as they called the race, we're walking out. Sun just opens 20, up. 2014, oh, uh, well, uh, July Daytona comes to mind as well. Just hey, immediately the, just gets cleared. <laughs> all I'm going to say is last time we went to Bristol, it was perfect weather. We had no issue. So let's hope for that again. Yeah, hopefully. That's for sure. Okay, so we're still waiting for Tommy Joe to get in here. In the meantime, uh, should we go, go through, through a bit of a... I could go through the start of the lightning round. Yeah, we can go through the start of the lightning round. So let me do my thing really quick. And it's time for the lightning round on the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. Jared, what do we have on tap? Well, for the first half of the lightning round. We got a lot. Um, so <laughs> that's why I said half. Like, yeah, no, we, we got, got a lot. lot. <laughs> PJ1 will be used at Kentucky, uh, both Good. sides. Good. Uh, so that's according to Bob Pockers. Jimmy Johnson has been cleared by NASCAR to return to the race at Kentucky. That's good. Uh, so that's awesome. And it sounds right. like his kids didn't get any COVID. Oh, so thank God. Thank God. Better. That's good. That's good. Natalie Decker said on her Instagram she will be racing this weekend. So that's good. And also um, Angela Ruck as well. Just wanted to add that. <laughs> um, so, yes. Uh, you can't add to Jarrett's lightning round. What the hell do you I'm think I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just wanted to add that really quick. I know. I'll just, mm, I'll just be quiet. <laughs> uh, Zach Price, the crew member from the 12 car, uh, had his leg fractured, does not need surgery, luckily. Good. Wow. Uh, according to Adam Stern and Social Blade, Bubba Wallace has actually more than doubled his Twitter following in the last 30 days. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Good that's for him. Uh, and then he's also leading the all-star vote. Uh, it also, NASCAR had inspired the Mississippi flag change, according to a senator from there, Roger Wicker uh, is his name. So uh, good job, NASCAR. Yeah, um, that's cool. Mark Martin is on the Dale Jr. download. We actually we beat, beat him. Dale Jr. We download beat him so with bad. getting a guest on here first. So oh, yay. that's cool. There's a first time for everything. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, NASCAR's viewership has been up eight percent since returning in May. I'm not watching. Uh, My special flag's gone. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Mike Harmon returned to Applebee's. He said, "It's <laughs> not Indianapolis unless you're at Applebee's." on Crawford Road. We need um, to do a podcast from Applebee's with Mike Harmon sometime. That'd be cool. Hell yes. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome, man. Uh, 750 horsepower package will be used for the Daytona Road Course. Uh, and actually, we're going to get we're gonna be able to get through the lightning round right now. Uh, oh. Face masks are now required for the Bristol All-Star Race. Oh, really? Oh. I didn't even see that. Yes, there we go. Yeah, that, they announced it like about. five days ago. I think. I'm talking. That's what I'm talking about. Good job, Bristol. Good job. Well, oh, oh, here's well, one also. Wait, I think he might have misinterpreted that. I think it's like 
once you're in your seats, it becomes optional. But when you're like yes. going in, it's oh, required. But, okay. but that's base. I mean, that's that's what I was going to be doing. Been. That's what I was going to be doing anyways. Yeah. But. Yeah. Uh, and then NASCAR has joined a business coalition asking Congress for help in obtaining pandemic risk insurance. Please, government. There's people that need it more than NASCAR and yeah, the NFL and all yeah. those. They don't, don't don't give sports a bailout. Dude, yeah, um, we don't. I don't think they need it. They don't need it. Give give normal people at first. Mm-hmm. There was uh, a yeah. uh, there was a report. I can't remember where I saw it from. A few different places. And I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but it kind of listed a lot of race teams uh, and like part of the um the. The, the PPP thing, I forget what it stands for, but basically mm-hmm. like the small business loan program that the U S is putting out I, uh, I know several... front row was one of those front yes. row, Chip Ganassi, Roush, CR, JTG, RCR, all were involved. They'd as in uh, like they'd taken advantage of and gotten loans of some of them were like a couple hundred thousand, a couple, some were a few, up to a few million. Uh, it was very vague, but it was interesting to see. And there's some ARCA teams on there as well. There's a mm-hmm. few smaller teams. I didn't see like Hendrick, Joe Gibbs, uh, they might not even qualify because I think you have to have you only qualify as a, as a small business, I guess, if you have less than a certain number of employees and perhaps some of the bigger teams don't even qualify. But I thought that was interesting that a lot of the smaller even cup teams were on that list as though uh, as taking advantage of this, which I mean, I don't I guess I don't blame them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't blame them for it. But it's like, mm, I don't know. It's just some, you know, some people who need it way, way more, I guess. But I mean, what are they going to do? You know, go out of business or whatever. So I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that's the lightning round. Darren, did you did you send the link to him on Twitter? I sent it to him on Twitter, but then his PR guy was like, "Did you send the link?" I'm like, "Yeah, I sent it 12 minutes ago, but I sent so, him the link, so he'll be on, guys. He'll be on. Don't he'll worry. be on. Okay, just yeah. want to make sure. Uh, but yeah, that's that's it for the lightning round for the most part. I mean, you know, there's like little. Let's see, we have one, two. Oh, by the way, Kyle Busch is on the poll. Uh, for mm. people who hadn't seen it yet, Kentucky. He, he, so. Maybe he can finally get a, a uh, playoff this, point. This is one of his best tracks, like as oh. as far as like. That's right. He has zero playoff points. Oh my gosh, Kyle Busch, and we're almost halfway through the season. Oh my gosh, we're, we're we only have ten races left until uh, the Ooh. playoffs. Oh my goodness, damn, Kyle. Yeah. But yeah, he really has been off this year. Yeah, yeah. No wonder people are making a big fuss. I didn't even know that. Jeez. Yeah, hopefully yeah. he returns to glory sometime. Mm-mm. Yeah, he is the highest driver that has not earned playoff points. Everybody ahead of him, either in wins mm. and points, has. Um, and of drivers that are in the top 16 right now, he is one of only three. The only other two are Matt Benedetto and Austin Dillon. Even Jimmy Johnson, William Byron, <laughs> Clint Boyer have, have gotten more. Wait, hold up. Austin Dillon has more playoff points. And Kyle Busch this year. No, he has the same amount. Oh, the same amount. Okay, okay, okay. I was about to say, like, whoa, that would have been a major set. Nothing against Austin Dillon, but, you know, Kyle Busch is, you know, he's in a different category there. We always. have the same number of playoff points as Kyle Busch this yeah, year. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Just to bring that joke back. The running yeah. joke, remember, in, in, in uh, 2018. what was it? Yeah, 2018. No, season we have, one. We have just as, uh, um, we have we just have led as many just wins as, as, as Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> no, we led just as many laps. Oh, that's right. Just <laughs> as many laps. Oh, my goodness. We that were, was a rough year. We were so disrespectful. <laughs> I'm, I'm back for a minute. I've let my back kind of rest. Oh, yeah. So. How, how was that? How was the whole lean back type deal? How was that? Uh, it's very relaxing. Uh, y'all would probably laugh if you actually – if I, everyone in chat would probably laugh if they saw, like, whatever kind of view I was like. You looked like Principal Skinner in that meme. Yeah, you really did. <laughs> I don't well, know. Well, I ended up going far back. I was probably, honestly, at a 180-degree uh, angle right now. Yeah. So. All right, we so, should all do an episode where we just lay on the floor. <laughs> so we should just do. Just lay on the floor, just be like, yeah. I'll fall so asleep. Gonna not gonna lie. That. Yeah, I'll, I'll fall asleep in a little in a heartbeat. But um, uh, I, I, I did have to go. I was starting to feel kind of tired. So I bet. Yeah, I bet man. <laughs> we should just do a stream where we sleep, <laughs> like an eight-hour stream. <laughs> no, that's what that's what Kamikaze did Kamikaze a couple did years that. ago. He, oh uh, really? Yeah, he streamed himself sleeping through. I think I think it, I don't know if it was a Daytona 500 or a race or something yeah. or. But he was like, he was like himself uh, sleeping for like five or six hours. He's like, <laughs> 40 people were still there. I think it was the end of it. They're That's like, so good. That's great. All right. So is that it for the lightning round, Jared? I think that is it for the lightning round. Okay. And once again, yeah, my mic broke. And once again, that'll do it for another edition of the lightning round on the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. Appreciate it, Jared. 
Um, so yeah, we're still waiting for Tommy Joe. So GN said he happen? was watching that stream. Oh, he was. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, and then that dude uh, D Ray is saying in the chat, "What if streaming himself sleeping through the 2019 500?" Oh, so yeah, no one has streamed crazy. themselves sleeping this year. What's up, five points? That's crazy. Um, I haven't been picking the 500 to sleep, dude. That hasn't been boring since. 13. Yeah, well, no, what if <laughs> he's now. like, he, he protests the Cup Series now since the whole package changed. So. No, he used to. Oh. oh, he used to. Yeah, he used to. Yeah, do he that. watches again. Yeah, yeah, so that's um, a big deal, but, but yeah. <laughs> I guess we can, uh, what, Dale Jr. was singing on his podcast this week. <laughs> I, do, I don't want to hear that. Um, I'm sorry, I don't think... Uh, if if his singing is anywhere near to his acting ability, I don't want to hear it. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he, was on, ideas. he was on that show. Um, I forgot the name in 2004. He was like, he was like, yeah, yeah. Well, I heard you're a big fan. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's like, what King of Queens? I, it, it wasn't King of Queens. It was um, it was on the same channel as them, TBS in 2004. It was the one with Kevin Kevin James, right? No, 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 no. It was a different show. It was a different show. Was was it I the Bill Engvall show? I, maybe I don't know. I don't know. All I know that one came out in the heaven. That came out in a seven. Wait, what was it, Eric? What'd you say? No, I was making oh, a joke. Oh, okay. no, I thought you were serious. I thought they were dead. <laughs> Look, Bobby, there's Dale Earnhardt. There's Dale Earnhardt. Damn, I like this rope right here. This is a nice Isn't, rope. It's soft and pretty. I yeah, saw it as they were unloading my car. And then Such also, a good scene. Also, he has Bobby. Do you want to be a fan of Dale Earnhardt or Jeff Gordon? I like Gordon. Oh. He's handsome. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? What the hell, Bobby? Jeez. But anyway. We'll be at a track with Dale Earnhardt. Where is the way you view it? With Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon. <laughs> Dang, I had a teacher last semester that worked on King of the Hill for years, and I should have asked him about that episode. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. That was a missed opportunity. I didn't think about it. <laughs> yeah. He would have looked at me like I was sideways or something. He probably doesn't. <laughs> but in the meantime, while we wait for the uh, for the one and only Tommy Joe Martins, uh, anything else on tab we have, Jared? Uh, we can start looking at the playoff picture if okay. you want. Okay, oh, yeah. Let's look at the playoffs, man. Let's look at playoffs. We're going to talk about playoffs. Yes, we are going to talk about playoffs. We're close to halfway this year, buddy. Yeah, so perfect time uh, to talk about playoffs. No, like I said, we we had 10 races left oh. in before the playoffs. 13 races left before the playoffs in Xfinity. And How 10 many races. races in total, though, this year for the Cup Series? Because when 16. I say, okay, okay. So, yeah, 18, then, yeah, that's technically halfway. But, yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, guys locked in. Kevin Harvick, Chase Elliott, Brad Kozlowski, Ryan Blaney, Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, Martin Truex Jr., and Alex Bowman. Now, when you look at points, uh, there are eight drivers who are in on points. Eric Almarola is the top one. He's up 111. Mm -hmm. Then there's Kyle Busch up 107. Kurt Busch, 103. And then Matty D is up 59. Clint Boyer is up 56. William Byron is up 38. Jimmy Johnson is still up. 36 because everyone was clutching defeat <laughs> hey, in the jaws of victory. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone was clutching defeat from the jaws of victory. And then oh. Austin Dillon is plus six. Now, the four that are on this chart that are in the playoff picture at this moment but are not in, Eric Jones is minus six out of the playoffs right now. Uh, minus 16 is Tyler Reddick, who has more playoff points right now than Kyle Busch. Uh, Bubba Wallace has... Uh, well, as many playoff points as Kyle Busch, but he's only out by 42. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is 20th, minus 48. Right now, I think that those four can point their way in at the moment, especially with the way that Boyer, Byron, mm -hmm. Jimmy, and Dylan have been running. But it's uh, it's going to be tough for Bubba and, and Stenhouse. But, I mean, Bubba's been pretty consistent. Oh, yeah. So. Bubba in that 43 team, I mean, look getting their stuff from from RCR. RCR has massively improved over the years. I mean, especially this year. And now, you know, the 43 is now, you know, improving with them. So that's good to see, man. That's good to see. Because, you know, um, saying Bubba Wallace is in playoff contention, you know, a year or two years ago, we would have just laughed in your face like, no, he's not. Uh-uh, no way. He will never do it. But then, you know, this year he's definitely improving. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. I like it. Yeah, I'm keeping my eye still on on Eric Jones and Tyler Reddick just mm -hmm. outside the bubble at the moment. Eric Jones has the speed. He blew a tire at Indianapolis, got involved in that wreck in the first Pocono race. So if not for those DNFs, he would be in the top 16 pretty, pretty solidly right now. Uh, I, I think that team's inconsistent, but I trust Joe Gibbs to get him in the in the playoffs. Tyler Reddick, I think the real like headline will be like Reddick versus Austin Dillon mm -hmm. trying to snag maybe the last playoff spot because I do think one of the RCR cars will get in. 
at this point, looking at who's outside, who's on the bubble, I think it would be tough to see both of them get in. Because like, who, is, is Tyler Reddick and Austin Dillon, are they really going to outrun Jimmy Johnson the rest of the year now that he's back from, from mm-hmm. illness? Are they going to outrun Clint Boyer? They could. I don't think I Clint see. Boyer's great, but you know he is I, – I just – I don't know. That That's tough. We'll see. We'll see. I could see Jones and Reddick outrunning Johnson slightly. Uh, but I, 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 okay. So just really quick, 59 points is the amount that can change in a race. Right. Um, so 59 points is what separates 12th from 17th. Uh, so Matt Benedetto, Clint Boyer, uh, William Byron, Jimmy Johnson, Austin Dillon, those five right now, uh, they're, they're in a bit of a precarious spot. Now I believe a hundred, let, let me make sure I, I get this right. It's 118 points uh would be two races so nobody is within two races right now of being in mm. uh eric almarola and kyle bush and kurt bush are close um i'd say like what when a driver gets to plus 118 that's that's where they're safe so i wouldn't even say eric almarola kyle bush or kurt bush are safe yet of those i'd say kurt bush is probably the most safe uh followed by almarola and that's not saying that these guys are in jeopardy by any means but i would say kyle bush has like Kyle Busch has been prone before being in playoff contention of having strings of bad races in his poor seasons. Yeah. So it is not out of the realm of possibility that three or four races from now, we're talking about Kyle Busch being in the same category as Boyer, Byron, Johnson, Dylan, Jones, Reddick, Wallace. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, we're talking about, you know, the whole point situation, but then when you look at the, uh, you know, the whole revised schedule and, you know, uh, what particular race is the final race of the regular season? I mean, I'd have to say, you know, it's the wild, wild rest uh, of uh, the the wild, wild west right now. You know, just everyone has a shot. You know what I mean? Especially with this whole, you know, with uh, with the uh, with the Cup Series running the Daytona Road Course now, and then also, you know, Daytona being the final regular season race. I mean, it's it's wide open right now, especially in the month of August. Once we hit the month of August, ooh, it's going to be wide open, you know, those final couple of weeks. So, I mean, I would like to say, yeah, yeah, this guy, he can lock himself in. He can lock himself in. And then, like, you know, on the other side say, yeah, he's out. He's definitely out. But we don't know for sure. I mean, talking about this Daytona road course, I really think Michael McDowell can legit compete for a victory. I mean, he's such an amazing road course racer. Uh, a racer, you know, at these road courses, and then, and then, you know, someone like you know, um, out of nowhere, let's say uh, maybe a Chris John Busher. Hunter yeah, John Hunter Nemechek, maybe let's say at you know Daytona, or maybe a Chris Busher can come out of nowhere and kind of steal the show there. So, I mean, you know, you never know. NASCAR did it for the intent of you know of entertainment purposes. So it's going to be very entertaining those final couple of weeks. Keep an eye on Daytona for sure, but even at just the normal racetracks um, beyond that, there are a few, there are a couple really good cars outside the top 20 with, you know, inexperienced drivers, but Christopher Bell has shown top five speed consistently the last few weeks. Cole Custer. Chris, uh, Cole Custer, I think has been pretty much non-existent most of this year, but he finished top five in Indianapolis. Oh. Uh, so I, I would say keep an eye on him for, for a possibility. And don't rule out Matt Kenseth, who almost won in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. That 42 car, most everyone expected to make the playoffs at the beginning of this year. So that's kind of like a freebie spot in the top 16 that nobody saw coming at the end of this year. Keep an eye on Matt Kenseth because he last, I think Pocono, he had top 10 speed both races and top five speed in Indianapolis. He will uh, will contend for at least one or two more wins later this year. Okay, let's stop right there. We will come back to the playoff talk later in the show. Our guest is here. Yes, finally, Ooh. we have Tommy Joe in here, so let's let him get in here. Adjust the audio really quick, too. Yeah, because it's always yeah, that's a whole mess. Zoom deal. It's always a Zoom deal. Like, hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And it's like, no, <laughs> your audio. And then, all right, he's here. Hey, Tommy, how's it I'm going? I'm here. Hey, how's I'm it here. going? You know, you know what? what? When you uh, when you jump over time zones occasionally, you forget what Eastern time and Central time is. <laughs> hey, it's I, all I, good. I apologize, here. No, it's all good. About that. No, it's all good, Tommy, man. Great to have you on the show. How's it going, Tommy? Doing pretty good. How are you guys doing? Oh, absolutely great. Pretty good. Uh, fantastic, sir. So um, I'll get this first question out of the way. Um, you know, this year, man, you know, 2020 in the Xfinity Series for you, I'm, I'm, I'm not exaggerating here. This has been the probably the the um the most you know um worst filled luck season i have ever witnessed in my lifetime as a nascar fan i i i can't explain it i don't know why i don't know what you did 
to deserve this season. I mean, <laughs> Josh Williams was on the show before you, and uh, he's convinced that you must have sold your uh, your uh, your your soul or something. <laughs> I don't know because this season has just not been in the cards for you. But I mean, talk about you know what going through a season like this has done for you personally. Uh, <laughs> it's been extremely tough. I mean, that's what I can say about it. Uh, it's to the point now where, you know, we do so much on social media for me, uh, being kind of a small team guy. And that's one of the main things we do for kind of sponsors is, is activate on social media talk a lot about social media. I feel like for, um, kind of a smaller team driver, I've got one of the bigger social media presences and man, it just kind of wears you down after a while where you try to be positive about the next week coming up and, you know, and I've done that and it's just to the point now going into this week, you know, it, it's hard to sit here and, and act like you can continually be positive about things. Uh, you can, of course it gets to you eventually. And, and I really have a lot of faith in my team. I really do. Mm-hmm. I know our equipment's pretty good. I know the speed that we've shown at times. And, and that's where you try to be encouraged where you go, gosh, I know when we've got things right. We're a top 15 team. Like we, we've done that. We've been up there in the mix, like at Charlotte and at Las Vegas and, California and so many of these tracks that we've gone to where we've run in the top 15 at times and and not like counting on a bunch of wrecks or anything but like actually been speed wise pretty good yeah and I guess that's the thing that kind of pulls you through Darian is you you sit there and you go look when we get it right we're really competitive probably more competitive than I ever thought we could be but we got to get it right and so until we do it's it's hard to sit there and go into the the weekend a hundred percent convinced that it's going to be your weekend and and going into this. I'm let's just say I'm cautiously optimistic. You know, I'm always looking forward to another chance to get in a car, but of course it it weighs on you and it's weighed on me big time this week. Is it more difficult this year with, you know, especially recently with not having practice most weeks and not being able to fine tune the car then is it, is it, does that add an, an extra layer of uncertainty each week that maybe wasn't there before? Yeah, Eric, I think sometimes that we probably could have benefited from some practice, yes. But I will also sit here and say, as the owner of the team, that practice has saved us money. It has. Has it cost me finishes? Yeah, it absolutely has. There's probably some some problems that we would have identified in practice. But I think as an industry overall, it has been a step in the right direction for us to have less practice than we've had in the past. Mm. There's no reason for us to have two 50 minute practices or three 50 minute practices for an Xfinity race. There, there, there's no reason for that. Um, I think a short practice probably would help us out, but if that's something that we don't have in the future, I'm, I'm not going to hold that against NASCAR. Like that's a problem caused by this. Like the problem for us is we haven't been prepared. Our cars haven't been right. Um, our guys know that it's something that's weighed heavy on them. Every small mistake, like they're sitting in the pits and they're worried that something's going to happen. And we've actually had problems where at times they've tightened things up. Like perfect example, we had an oil line that came loose. One of the things that happened is they tightened the screw too tight. Wow. And it's just because it's because of being so worried about something breaking oh. that you over tighten it oh, and then no. something breaks. And so it's it's just one of those things that you know, we point to ourselves. We're not pointing towards NASCAR or anything else like that it's it's just a situation we got to get a little bit better so on the subject of that you're talking about you know just you're lacking that opportunity to, to touch the car is there anything that, you, you know got me? oh yeah 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 we still got you yeah still yeah. Got you. yeah yeah you're good <laughs> do you have us you have us okay i got you guys i got you guys now okay cool you're right, there cool. all right cool cool Go okay ahead, um so i was asking so you're saying that but basically, without these practice sessions and similar thing that Josh Williams told us, it's, it's hurting a little bit. If there was anything that could be changed, you know, if, if they even said, OK, hey, we're going to we're going to actually start qualifying again. But you're but there's no practice. If you even had chances to go, go qualify a car, you know, would that even be a little bit to help you guys a little bit? You know, I don't know, though, Danny, because like some th- things in qualifying are so much different than they are in practice. And, right. and I heard Dave Moody say this, where he started talking about practice as like, well, if we did practice as like a qualifying situation, um, you know, would that change things? No, because essentially everybody would just treat that practice like it's qualifying. Everybody would be trimmed out and, 
Mm -hmm. because we're racers, right? Of course, we're, we're going to approach it differently. So I think you would actually still need it to be a short practice. And if you're going to qualify, it would need to be designated as a qualifying session, right? And so it's like you would almost need to have practice and then a random draw. And honestly, this random draw, I think it, I think we're on the short end of it again this week at Kentucky. But really, it hasn't affected me. And I really don't think it's affected the, the finishes of these races very much. Like where we've started has not affected where we finished. We, we have affected where we finished, <laughs> right? Not the random draw. So, so that's my take on it. It's like, I think both of these things are, are fine. Uh, we just got to do a little bit better job at the shop, getting these cars ready. So it sounds like, you know, essentially you're fine without qualifying. You did a random draw, but you just want a chance to touch the car. You want to practice again. Yeah. If we did a short practice, I think that'd be fine. I don't, I don't think anybody would have a problem with that. That would probably help maybe like a 25 minute or something like that. Um, and that would probably accomplish something for the tracks too. Really the tracks have been the ones that have been the most uh, kind of for practice. They just want more time of the cars on the track. And yeah. what I would say is, is there a way to shift that into more races? And you've seen that with cup running multiple races in a weekend. I think that's going to kind of become the standard moving forward, Danny. I think that's, you know, I think that's going to kind of be the big thing now. Um, you saw that schedule release today where Cup's going to run two more doubleheader weekends. And I think that's just going to be kind of a part of our schedule moving forward for every series. Mm -hmm. So I saw a report, uh, I believe a day or two ago, that uh, your crew chief, Daniel Johnson, has been suspended uh, yeah. due to a rear axle issue. How does that affect the team, especially in these times right now? Yeah, look, it's not going to sit here to act like it doesn't hurt us more. <laughs> like there was a there was a penalty earlier this year. I think it was maybe with the Penske team where, um, and if it wasn't the Penske team, I'll forget about it. Maybe it was Haas, but essentially they had their whole crew across the street, like at the at the Holiday Inn or something. They had like a war room set up or something like that, where essentially they were all still really plugged in. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not we're not going to be doing that. <laughs> it it affects us maybe a little more uh look daniel johnson is a great crew chief and i know we've had a lot of car problems this year but our speed has been good and a lot of this has been out of his control and he's a really good guy and he's such a critical guy for us we only have four full-time employees that's what we got at martin's motorsports and i'm not one of them by the way <laughs> so so we only have four guys uh so when you lose when you lose 25 percent of your staff and the number one guy on your staff, obviously that hurts. Uh, but the guy that we've got filling in for us, Kevin Rebelletto, is a guy that has been a crew chief for me before. And he's new to the team. He came on in the last couple of weeks. And it's a guy that had been a crew chief for me before at BJ McLeod Motorsports. So it's somebody that I have a familiarity with. And, like, we're just really lucky that he kind of fell to us at the right time because, obviously, this is going to be a, a critical point for us. And, and having somebody on the box that I'm familiar with is going to be really important. So I guess uh, touching uh, uh, touching base again uh, with the uh, with the current 2020 season. Um, um, what are your expectations for the rest of this year? You know, when I came into the year, one of our goals was to finish. Me personally, finish in the top 20 of the driver points. And where I'm sitting right now, after kind of how this year has gotten off to the start that it's gotten off to, th that's just a little bit of a reach. I'm not saying that I can't do it but we would need to kind of get on a little bit of a run here. And, and I have a lot of faith in my guys. I think that we can do that. Um, but if we could finish in the top 25 of the owner points at the end of the year and get me in the hunt for the top 20 of the driver points at the end of the year, um, that top 20 of the driver points pays a big bonus. That's money at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and 20th is about 75 or 80 grand. And so that's a big chunk for a team like ours. Uh, so if we could just be in the mix for that at the end of the year, uh, that would show that we've clearly made big strides in our consistency and, and kind of our preparation moving forward. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. Also talking about uh, upcoming races that, you know, the cup, you mentioned the cup series has some double headers coming up, but also the Xfinity series is going to get really busy. Is that uh, for a smaller team, like, like, like your team, uh, does that add an extra like, like bit of strain to the, to the, like the week to week operations or is it more difficult or do you guys kind of like getting it all done at once, like all in one weekend? Eric, I love it. <laughs> I, I do. I love I love the doubleheader weekend. This is something that when NASCAR first called us, when they told us that they were going to be kind of shuffling the weekends up a lot, especially for the NASCAR Xfinity Series, you know, and 
Xfinity has been a great partner in all this because I think they have kind of been the up for anything group. <laughs> and and I think they look to me because I've been so vocal about small teams and the finances of that and all that. And I think NASCAR approached me because they really wanted my opinion. They knew that I would kind of tell them the truth. And the first thing that I told them was, well, we ought to do double header weekends mm. like that. <laughs> That would save us a ton of money because, like, all of a sudden now, that's one less time that we're so traveling. It was, you. All week. it was all you then who got the double. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's, you can count me for it. I'm not going to act like I was the only one, but but when they asked what was the the things that we could do, they presented that as an option. Mm. Like we can do no practice, we can do double headers, you know, we can do uh, kind of a shortened weekend schedule a one day show, what could we do? And I was like, double headers. Mm -hmm. Like I was just always for double headers. I felt like that was a really big thing for us. Um, and you saw how it went down at Homestead. I thought it was awesome. Perfect. I thought it worked out great. I think that could be a part of our schedule moving forward. Like with the schedule that they've announced now with us, not, excuse me, not going to Michigan. I felt like that created an opportunity for another double header. And we're doing that at Dover. And personally, I look at that like, okay, I'm running a 500 mile race, right? Mm -hmm. Because with a small team, do we have a backup car? Eh, kinda, mm -hmm. okay. sort of, yeah, kinda, kinda, sort of. <laughs> we would, we would basically it, have to- it, it, it probably can't have as near as much focus as your primary car. Right, right. and so that's it. Like we would have to build it at the track and that's probably not great. So I look at it like I'm gonna run a 500 mile race. So it's my job as the driver to take care of this car for the first 200 miles, like we're going to Kentucky, for example, tomorrow. I gotta to take care of it for 200 miles. And then the final 300 miles is kind of like, all right, now this is the spot that I get to be more aggressive. Hmm. So it's hmm. kind of like we're getting to run a cup race. And I think that's really neat. That's cool. That's awesome. Danny. Danny. <laughs> Sorry about that. I've lost track of the order again. Sorry it's about all that. Good. <laughs> So, uh, I, I mean, it, gosh, there's really a lot that you've, uh, you kind of discussed with us so far. So I'll just kind of talk about, you know, what's what's your overall, you know, plan and goal for, for this weekend's racing in Kentucky. You've, you've mentioned a little bit about it, but, you know, if you, if you can accomplish one thing from this weekend, what are you looking to do? Well, look, uh, we got short-term goals right now, which is right now we're sitting 31st in the owner's points going into a race. And, and our goal all season – and I've had more lofty goals, obviously, finishing the top 10, running the top 15 consistently. Yeah, sure, those are all great. But really, the short-term goal for us is to get back in the top 30 in the owner's points. Um, that pays a bonus to our team that can be up to $15,000 a race. Whoa. Uh, which, like, when you're out of that top 30, you're ineligible for it. So we're ineligible for that right now. And so when you're potentially taking $10,000 out of your pocket every week, um, for us, uh, when your budget for the entire season is around $1.2 to $1.4 million, 10000 a week adds up really quickly. Um, so that's our short-term goal. I think the 74 car is like three points ahead of us. And so that's what we're trying to do, Danny, going into Kentucky. We want to beat the 74 car. Um, that's our short-term goal. We know that if we accomplish what we are capable of as a team, the points kind of take care of themselves. But you got to try to focus on the small goals one race at a time, right? So for us, the 74 and the 99 car are right ahead of us in the points, and those are the people that we're trying to race. Mm -hmm. So there so there you go, folks. If you want a battle to watch tomorrow, kind of like, you know, you'll be watching the, the leaders, of course, but watch the battle between the 44 and the 74. Yeah, that's the that's key it. battle. And, and look, I just want to say big props to Mike Harmon, mm -hmm. big props to Bailey Curry, Big props to Kyle Weatherman. Oh, Kyle yeah. Weatherman has finished in the top 15 twice in the last two races. Oh, yeah. In the 47 mm -hmm. car. Mm -hmm. So we we want to – everybody tries to take a crap on Mike Harmon for trying to be, like, super cheap and all this kind of stuff. They have really upgraded their program a lot this year, and it has shown. And, like, this is not a layup, like us going and beating them, like maybe it would be in past years. Uh, this is something that, like, yeah, that is absolutely a uh, – a goal for us and if we beat them like that's going to be good that's that's a step and, in the right direction they have they've proven they can be really fast i would say that also speaks to you know their their talent as as drivers people always are, are saying yes. you know people are talking about your talent saying you are you're out driving you know at times the equipment you may be in same thing can be said for them too there's, there's a lot of talent that's that's uh, deeper in the field that people just don't get a chance to really look at absolutely bailey and 
and Kyle both ought to get a lot of credit for what they've done in those cars this year. It's really impressive. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, especially especially uh, uh uh what's his name Kyle Kyle uh, Kyle Weatherman. Too. Kyle he's Weatherman. Been, he's been yeah. really good. He's been really really good this year. He'll be on the podcast uh, uh, next month, so we'll talk to him. A lot of respect. A sure. lot of respect for those guys yeah. and what they're doing. A lot of respect. Definitely. So, really, just to close out our part before we get to a few fan questions, I wanted to actually ask. So, you're uh, you're from Mississippi, and recently Mississippi has voted to change their state flag, and actually the government there credited NASCAR as leading that effect. I guess for you, just coming from there, what what's that kind of feeling like of having NASCAR be the leaders in this to the state? It was a moment of pride for me because I've been really outspoken about that with the flag and. It was a cause that I kind of took up because it's something that where I've run the state flag on my car uh, in previous years and and had that removed and and swapped it out for what I considered was like kind of an optional flag. It was called the Stennis flag. Um, It's been changed now to the hospitality flag. Uh, But that was something personal to me. And so I put a video out on Instagram about that and and how I felt like it had affected me and, and kind of my career and why I made the change. And that wound up kind of going to the state Senate. Apparently that video got showed at the state Senate Oh wow! Uh, and potentially flipped a few votes. And so to hear that, that was really humbling. Um, but it also makes me just really proud, uh, really proud to be where I'm from, uh, really proud for the steps that we're taking as a state and really proud of my sport and the platform that's given me to be able to speak out on something like that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Without a doubt. Yes, sir. So let's get into a few fan questions here. Uh, the first question from Denny Delivers. What got you into starting your very own Xfinity Series team? I think it was kind of, uh, I'm not going to say necessity, uh, but it was a feeling that I just knew that we could do it. We had we had sponsors in place. Um, my dad and Rodney Reeson, who is the co-owner of Martin's Motorsports right now, mm. we've kind of been down this road before. Quite frankly, we had learned a lot of the wrong ways to do it. Um, if you would look at the results right now, you could probably say we probably still haven't learned the right way to do it. But we we kind of learned a lot of the we probably le- learned a lot of the wrong ways, and I felt like we really put together a, a good a good uh, set of equipment. Um, I think we brought in the right guy. Daniel Johnson, he, I'm telling you, this guy's a good crew chief. We're going to get the results. I know it's going to show. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, we knew that we could set it up, and it came to a deal where when I was negotiating with Carl Long and NBM, wow. um, they wanted me to bring more money to the table than I was really comfortable bringing. Um, and we basically had a crossover point where I felt like if the, if the number got high enough, it would be a deal where we could start our own team. And essentially it did. And the path that we chose was to start up Martin's Motorsports again. And, and I've said this before, and I'll say it now, you know, Martin's Motorsports doesn't begin and end with me driving the car. Um, this is something that I want to be a business moving forward mm-hmm. for years. And if that's, if that's with me, not in the seat, that's fine. Like I want Martin's Motorsports to continue. If it doesn't continue as Martin's Motorsports, if it's something we sell to somebody else, but I'm in a management role, whatever it is, like I, I really think, what we've done here is start a business that I think can be successful moving forward. Oh, that's funny you mentioned that. Um, I guess uh, that brings up um, a question of my own. If you had to put uh, um, another driver in that seat, who would it be? <laughs> Ooh, that's tough. Um, gosh, you know the guy that you had on earlier would be a pretty good one. Oh, Josh, Josh Williams. Williams. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh, He's a badass. Josh He's is a badass, guy that I. Sure. Gosh, I got a lot of respect for him. I, I think he uh, is legitimately probably the best racer in the Xfinity series right now. Really? Uh, and I mean wow. that That's high praise. as a whole, first of all, he's a great personality. He's a ton of fun. You guys had him on here, got to fool around with him. Mm-hmm. I don't think a lot of people could see his personality, but I mean, the guy's a real character. Um, he's somebody that if they had him on TV, they'd never get him off TV. Um, <laughs> so there, there's that. Uh, he's a hell of a racer. Uh, great driver. Somebody that when I pass him, I got to work for it. Hmm. And somebody that can also be the crew chief of his own car. Really? Legitimately. He can do it all. With, do it all. Without a doubt. And yeah. so when I see somebody like that, you know, I, I can't do that. I can't be the crew chief of my own car. I, I wouldn't trust me to put a tire on. <laughs> and, and so I see somebody like that. It just, that's a level of respect uh, for a competitor in our series. 
Uh, Bailey Curry is another guy like that. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if he can necessarily crew chief his own car, but works on the cars himself, drives the cars. Um, so I see those type of guys. Camden Murphy was another one of those guys. I know he hadn't gotten a lot of opportunities this year, but he's a really great I've heard kid. Of him. I talked to his dad for a little bit in, uh, when we were in Daytona. He's a, he's a good guy. Good guy. Great, great kid. Landon Huffman's another one. He's run late models mm-hmm. over there in Carolina. Really good guy. So, I mean, I see guys like that kind of float around, and, and you know that they're, they're talented. Uh, they're going to work really hard, and they're going to give you all their effort, both at the track and away from it. And those are the type of guys you want. All right. Uh, uh, speaking of speaking of that, like um, you were talking earlier about uh, BJ McLeod and how you once drove for him, um, he's one of those guys that I would, would probably equate to kind of like how you just described. You know, the position you're willing to go into. BJ obviously owns his own company, but he's he's went and drove for you know JD Motorsports to let others yeah. drive in his own equipment. So I mean, ha- having that kind of previous relationship with him has, has, has he been influential in your path to where you are now at all? Absolutely. Uh, I think of BJ is like the perfect role model for me. Um, if I, if I could have a funded driver or another driver drive for me with sponsors from my own team and then be able to drive for somebody else in just a driver role, that's like the perfect situation. I cannot describe to you guys the level of stress that comes from running your own car Mm, week in and week out when you're worried about that. And it was Daryl Walter that said, he's like, you know, you can be an owner and a driver, but you can only be good at one. Oh, damn. And, and I really, and you know what? He's, he's not wrong. Mm. He's not wrong. And like right now I have a couple of other owners in this team, my dad and Rodney recent who I can kind of lean on to be the owners. Mm. But I think about like somebody like BJ that had to do all of that by himself. And that is an incredible burden. Um, you know, I, it would, I would be lying if I said it hadn't affected my driving. So for BJ, uh, to get to see his cars running on the track and be the owner for his cars, but then turn around and just get to be a driver for somebody else like Johnny Davis, who's, who's a great owner and been in the series for a long time. Uh, Danny, that's like the perfect situation. <laughs> so I would love to be in a situation like that. Watch the 44 run up front. Mm-hmm. And then he be in another car and run up front with him. That would be awesome. That would be perfect. Or, or for sure. just, just, just that's the ideal situation. I hope it doesn't end up that you're driving along. Next thing you know, the 44 is coming at you eight or so. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> we'll wait and see what happens on that. Uh, the final fan, uh, the uh, the final fan question. And oh, we, uh, you were just talking about this. Um, how does being the owner of your own ride affect your driving style at particular tracks? Yeah. Uh, you know, when you know how much something costs, it affects you. Oh, yeah. But. <laughs> I'll say that, yeah. um, you know, you know, and, and this is not a diss to any of those guys that are up there in the top level of equipment. Mm-hmm. Uh, because honestly, a lot of them are extremely good drivers and, and I am not dissing this at all. Uh, but the one thing I will say is they've never had to worry about what, how much a tire costs. No. They, they've never had to worry about how much your fender costs and, and they're going to, of course, they're going to drive differently because of that. And, and so when you get guys back there in my level of the garage, um, that is absolutely part of the speech before every race. Like, Hey, you got to race this car next week or, Hey, you know, we just had to fix that car last week. You got to take it easy or, you know, because it's mostly about resources guys. Like when you only got four guys on a team, they can only work on so much. Right. Right. So like when you're sitting there wrecking a car every week, it's not just money. It's also time. Like they can't fix everything. Yeah. <laughs> so it puts your team in a real tough bind where now they're working extremely late hours. They're getting to the track late. Maybe your car is not set up as well. So you're hurting yourself as well. So like that's the kind of things that I look at, Darian, when it comes to owning your own team. You just understand everything that goes into it from a time, personnel, money standpoint to get the car ready to be at the racetrack. And it just makes you drive with the respect of that. Like you understand just how hard it is to even put the car out there in the first place at a competitive level. And you just want to make sure that it's easier on your people uh, that you got working for you uh, when they get the car to the track the next week. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good answer there. Really appreciate you <laughs> answering that question. So um, I guess we are now out of time. Really appreciate you coming on, Tommy. Um, before you go, <laughs> where can people find you on social media? Well, you know what? As you guys probably know, I'm taking a little bit of a sabbatical from social media right now. Yeah, yeah. It's been a little bit of a 
bit of a tough place for me over the last few weeks. Well, you have a lot of support, uh, but, though, sir. A lot, a lot of support online, yeah. though. That's and, for sure. And, and Darian, I, and Darian, I want to say thank you to you personally because I know you yeah, sent me a, a message and, and really encouraging. And all you guys, uh, all y'all do such an awesome job for the NASCAR community. Thank Seriously, you. like appreciate I really, I appreciate all you guys and what you, you do. Uh, thank you. There has been way more support than I definitely deserve. And our team deserves for some of the efforts we put forward this year. But but I can say that we definitely appreciate it. And you can follow us at Team Martins on Twitter, at Martins Motorsports on Instagram. And then for me, it's at Tommy Joe Martins mm-hmm. on both Twitter and Instagram. And that's where I'm going to be doing most of my posting. And and hopefully, I have something very good to post about after tomorrow night. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. We'll <laughs> see. We'll, we'll, we'll be watching, that's for sure. So really appreciate you coming on the show, Tommy. And, uh, and uh, for those in the chat, tune in to the – into one of the two Xfinity Series races um, on Thursday, tomorrow night, and then Friday. Uh, um, you said uh, three hundred miles, correct? Three hundred miles. Three hundred miles. All right. Back, so. back to the back to the normal length on Friday. Yeah. We're going to the shorter, the shorter version of our night. Oh yeah, that's sprint for sure. race. Yeah, so the sprint <laughs> race is basically tomorrow, and then basically the marathon's Friday. So we'll that's uh, definitely be tuning in for that. Tommy, thank you so much for coming on, sir. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you guys thank you. for having me. Appreciate yes, sir. it. All right, you have a good one. All right. So Tommy Joe, y'all. Tommy Joe, um, you know, um, really down, uh, a very down to earth guy. I mean, we had him on the podcast last year, too. Really gave us the ins and outs of, you know, basically how of uh, of what, you know, of what everything costs to basically run your own team. So I really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And as y'all can tell, yeah, I do need a haircut. I'm getting it tomorrow, guys. Uh, while while, while uh, he was talking, I was basically just like fidgeting with it. Oh, <laughs> looking like freaking alfalfa or something like that from... <laughs> Uh, from what's up what's the movie called again oh yeah little rascals little rascals yeah because he had the little one little poop thing up there so yeah but no that, that beanie was getting too hot but but yeah that was a good interview really love tommy mm-hmm. yeah uh I, we only have one story left before picks if you guys oh, want to get right timing. into it All right, perfect timing let's do it uh the the rest of the regular season schedule has been released oh, um <laughs> so we got michigan trucks on friday double header cup saturday sunday arca on sunday before the cup race cup races are at 4 p.m eastern time on saturday and 4 30 on sunday mm-hmm. nbcsn with both of them uh road america is that same weekend it's at noon eastern time on nbcsn uh for the xfinity series uh then the daytona road course that's the big one everyone's talking yeah. about friday 5 p.m eastern on map tv arca then saturday august 15th xfinity 3 p.m eastern nbcsn Sunday, August 16th, noon Eastern, Fox Sports 1. And then Cup is on August 16th at 3 p.m. Eastern time on the big NBC channel. Ooh, next big week, NBC. next week on the same weekend as the Indy 500. So should I even talk about it? Yes, I will. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have three days of double headers. ARCA and Trucks on Friday, 2 and 5 p.m. Eastern. Xfinity Cup on Saturday and Sunday each. One starting at 12.30 on Saturday and then 4 and then 1 p.m. on Sunday and 4 as well. Then Daytona, Friday, Xfinity, August 28th, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, NBCSN. Saturday, August 29th, Cup Series, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the big NBC channel. Uh, That same weekend, Saturday, there's going to be the ARCA race at 6 p.m. on MAV-TV, so it might bleed into it. No one's going to watch ARCA over Daytona (laughs) Cup. Um, And then Sunday, August 30th, Cup will be at Gateway, noon Eastern time on Fox Sports 1. Wait, Cup at at Gateway? Trucks. Oh, I'm sorry. Trucks. I was about to say, what? That was some news. I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. There you go. I really have to wonder, I said it earlier, that Daytona Road Course weekend, how many cup drivers are going to end up running a, an ARCA or a truck race that we can just for some safe time? Oh, yeah, that's for sure. And also uh, doing some research. First time since 1987 that the, cup, uh, that the Cup Series engines are not restricted at Daytona. So that's some mm-hmm. history-making stuff. So they're going to be I'm, going I'm really, really fast into turn one. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. I have to imagine now there's one particular person who had no clue this was going to happen when he did it, but... 
Kyle Busch is probably really happy that he got some track experience there this year. Oh, yeah, especially mm -hmm. in that, uh, I forgot what he ran, but it was one of those mini cars and stuff during the Rolex. The Lexus. The Lexus GT something. GT I something, I don't know. But, I mean, uh, it'll, it, it might play into his favor, and maybe that'll be the day we'll see Kyle Busch get his first win. Hopefully he gets it sooner rather than later, but we'll see. Um... Anyone else have anything else? No, no. Or that's want to go into picks? Well, I, I am excited to see uh, for the Daytona Road Course trucks leading into Cup. Usually we do like yeah. Xfinity and Cup on yes, the same day. Yes. Having trucks, they're going to tear that track up before the Cup cars get to it. So <laughs> that's, that's going to be <laughs> that's going to be something else. That's anyway, cool. Yeah. That's cool. The Truck Series and the Cup Series are on the same stage on the same day because you know uh, a lot of fans view the Truck Series as quote the best series in all of racing. I think the Xfinity Series has that title this season in NASCAR. But uh, the Truck Series is definitely a close and second. It's awesome. I, I yeah. think if nothing changes, they should probably be able to have some fans because they had something this weekend there and fans were actually Yeah, to yeah well, so uh, there was like some well, it has been skyrocketing. So, yeah. It's been sky – Florida's been skyrocketing in cases, though, so. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll it's, see just a wait, it's, it's, such, it's such a wait-and-see thing right yeah. now. We'll, we'll see anyway, what they're happens. They're still opening Disney World this week. So. <laughs> oh, wait, they are? <laughs> No yep. way. Oh, my so God. We'll see what happens. I know they did say, I saw a report that said they are hoping as of now to have some number of fans at both of the Daytona weekends. But, yeah, you're right. It's too early to say for sure. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. So let's go into picks. This weekend we have Kentucky. So the first pick, who is going to suck in the Cup Series race at Kentucky? Jarrett, start us off. Uh, this guy has not finished in the top ten at this track since 2015 he has not finished better than 14th at this track oh, uh if my research is right since 2016 mm -hmm. he is just overall not been good at this track and it's compounded on top of his downward spiraling career uh in these closing years i'm going jimmy johnson jimmy johnson is going to come back and it's not going to be a glorious <laughs> no one. no way no jared no <laughs> Damn chat, man! The chat's about to eat you alive, man. I, yeah, I, I actually, I actually <laughs> kind of agree. Good logic. Yeah, I, <laughs> I kind of agree on that one. He's because that's that's kind of the joke I saw today was that you know, Jimmy Johnson has one last chance to win at Kentucky, though like the one track he's never won at. <laughs> you know, guy, even though they've only raced like eight times, but uh, yeah, his his results at Kentucky have not been great, and Hendrick seems to not be where they were at the beginning of this year. Not, at least not quite so i think honestly that's probably my suck pick too i didn't give him that much thought but I, i'll go along with that one so not everyone's hating you jared <laughs> i'm just go, sharing I'm, the hatred <laughs> i'm gonna go with a bubble driver eric jones has completely underperformed this season i know i know oh gut yeah heart heartburn Oof. right there right he's good but at kentucky i know he's good but i mean his luck this year has not been good i don't know something's gonna happen i mean uh he was running second Finished second, stage one in 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 Indianapolis last weekend, and then boom, tire explodes, race over, and then he's on the outside looking in. So I'm not saying that exact same thing's gonna happen, but I don't know, something's gonna happen one way or or the other. So Eric Jones, that's my suck pick, Danny. I'm gonna have a suck pick here and just say Daniel Suarez. Oh, is he racing? Yeah, he's racing this weekend. That's right. Yeah, Danny. he's he's full time, but oh oh yeah, that's right. He is full. See. I just forget, you know, I'm so used to Suarez running, like, you know, close to the mid-pack, and it's like, now he's kind of relegated towards the back, so I sometimes forget, you know, not to be yeah. mean, I'm sorry, but, yeah, that's, that's just the that's just the reality, unfortunately. Um, so, all right, so for uh, for the next set of picks, underdog, Jarrett, you start us off. Who is your underdog in the Cup Series at Kentucky? This guy has run well. His team has run well at Kentucky in the past, just hasn't got the finishes put together. Kind of stuff has been happened a lot last year. Hasn't really happened as much this year. This guy's been putting together a lot of top tens, a lot of top fifteens this year. Uh, he, I think he has momentum on his side. He has had a pretty good week overall, all things considered, uh, with who has come out to support him. I'm going Bubba Wallace as my dark horse pick this week. Mm, definitely a good pick. I've picked Bubba Wallace as my dark horse uh, as my dark horse pick too many times this year. I'm going to go a different route. I'm going to say Cole Custer. Cole Custer. Uh, first career Cup Series top five last weekend in Indianapolis, and I really think uh, they're on the right path. I'm not saying he's going to make the playoffs. I think that ship is set. Well, well, actually, you know, I mean, like I said earlier, you know, you have Daytona, the road course. You never know. So, I mean, there's always a shot. But pointing his way yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, but pointing probably. his way in, that's, a, that's, that's, that's just wishful thinking at this point. But I do think 
uh, he he does have a top ten finish in the works. So Cole Custer. There are a lot of potential underdog picks for this week. It was hard to narrow down to just one. I'm thinking like Matt Benedetto. I was surprised Eric Jones to suck because he ran top five here last year. I would have maybe put him as an underdog. Um, I'm going to go with – I'll lean towards Roush. I'm going to go with Chris Buescher, uh this weekend. Uh, the Roush cars last year both finished in the top ten. Uh, so – or no, just Newman. I think Newman just finished in the top ten last mm-hmm. year. I don't think both – but I think Chris okay. Buescher finished in the top ten. I did my research beforehand. I'm getting it mixed up. I think Buescher finished top ten, but he wasn't in Roush equipment. I think in Roush equipment this year he runs top seven. I think he's going to be kind of your surprise performer when it's all said and done. Yeah. Well – I'm actually thinking that this track is going to suit well for the styles of Hendrick Motorsports. They've had a, like an off few weeks, aside from Elliott for the last few weeks. But I think that really just plays into the tracks that they've been running in. So contrary to Jared, I'm actually going to say Jimmy Johnson will be my underdog for this one. I know he was hoping for me to say Bowman, but I wasn't going to. I was sitting there like, wait, I was like, ooh, yeah. and then all oh, right there. It says Johnson. The, the grin was growing. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, the finale. Who's going to win, or in better words, who's going to win at Kentucky this weekend in the Cup Series? Jared, you start us off. Who will win at Kentucky? I think it's somebody who has won a lot here in the past. Uh, he's won under multiple generations of cars, so that already narrows it down to two. Uh, yeah. But I think it's going to be the guy who really gives Kyle Busch a run for his money all the time here. I think it's going to be Brad Kozlowski maybe getting his final win in the two-car. Oh, uh, well, well, what's Chase Elliott going to do? Because somehow he's got to do something for Brad to win. Oh, yeah, he's got to mess, <laughs> uh, mess up somehow. I, 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 he'll blow a tire on the last lap. I don't know. <laughs> miss a shift. Oh, Mr. Shit. Yeah. Oh, on, on a restart. Oh, on a restart. On a restart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Like, no, not like, like, he's not like in just the middle of a run. Wrong. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? What does this button do? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it a button now? <laughs> Just, 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 just yanks the steering wheel yeah, off. Oh, right. should have done that. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Denny Hamlin, man. Harvick versus Hamlin. I don't see it stopping anytime soon, man. At least for you know uh, uh, the next few weeks, man. I don't know. Hamlin was for sure gonna win that race last week, and then boom, you know, had his uh, hopes and dreams go up in smoke, and just literally blew up right in his face. So Denny Hamlin, no tire tire failures, uh, failures this weekend. Denny Hamlin versus Kevin Harvick in the final laps. Denny Hamlin will come out on top. It's really hard for me to not pick a certain Chip Ganassi driver this week, given that Ganassi won last year at Kentucky. Larson finished third. Uh, He's coming off a top two finish, but... I'm not going to pick Matt Kenseth this week. Instead, oh. I'll go with his his old arch rival. I actually think Joey Logano will win this race. I think Penske's consistently had speed at this at this track, and um, you know we aren't we weren't talking about it in the last couple of weeks because of Harvick and SHR's dominance. But I think Joey Logano will show up and, and get the win on Sunday. All right, Danny, final thoughts. And continuing with my underdog prediction, I thought that Hendrick Motorsport would be pretty well at this track, and I actually think considering how the last you know few runs of D style tracks we did was for him. I'll say Chase Elliott gets win number two this weekend. Yeah. We'll see what happens, that's for sure. Well, before we end the show, let me read some super chats, man. We have had so oh, yeah. many. This is like our record breaking super that, chat stream on this and, today show. Yeah, that and really quick just to finish up on the Kentucky stuff, uh the forecast for the twelfth, eighty seven degrees, thunderstorms, forty percent chance. Okay. Boy, 40- yeah, we, have, we, we have lots. 40% chance. Damn, yeah, it's going to rain. It's going to rain this weekend. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. That's for sure. All right, so let's get into these final super chats. I like bacon. Thank you for the two bucks there, buddy. Um, will Eric Almor- uh, Almarola, I can't speak right now, win a race this year? Um, You know, maybe. I'd say it's a maybe right now. He's definitely improved his, uh, his performance, so we'll have to wait and see. There's a couple tracks I'd have on the radar for him. Mm, yeah, we'll see what happens. Beast of Metal, thank you for the $2.50. Wasn't Daytona July 14, uh, uh, 2014 hit by a Sharknado? Yeah, kind of, sort of, yeah. And then, like, after they called it, it, it immediately just, just the skies opened up. It was all bright and sunny. And I'm like, are you serious? But, you know, Eric, Eric, Eric Amarillo did win. So, yeah, a, a Sharknado. Shark. A Sharknado. That was a good one. That was a good one there. <laughs> That I was there that weekend. That was some of the scariest weather and most unpredictable oh. weather, even for Florida standard. That was wild. Yeah, it didn't look too well. Mr. Anti, or no, Mr. Anti Ant. I love that name. He has two 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 dollar super chats. Thanks, man. The first one says, "How many laps you think Cup Daytona Roval race will be?" I'd say, 
What's the mileage divide and they have a 350 kilometer race out of that? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know the track is going to have I'll, miles, but it, it, it's really big when you break it down into the road course. I'll, I'm I mean, going to say, and a half mile I'm, I'm going to say somewhere between 65 to 75 laps. I was going to say if 75 it, laps. Yeah, that's my take. Uh, yeah, just do. Uh, I've learned for road courses, unless they change the distance smaller, you just basically do however much 350 kilometers is. So, uh, that's uh, yeah, they're saying in the chat like 68. Oh, okay, okay. So around there. All right. So uh, I can I can check. It. Hold on. But overtime, make it 69. Yeah, no, 69. <laughs> Yo, make it yes. 69 on purpose, NASCAR. It, 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 it's like it's like what are you talking about? We're just gonna do the same as Daytona 500. 200 laps. Go go go. No 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 no. no. <laughs> 24. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, we'll see. All right, and then the second one. Uh, his question is: Don't you see Eric getting into Dylan slash Reddick in the uh in the, uh for the final spot? Uh, in the playoffs, um, I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, I do see. Um, if it's uh, if it's between those three, I do see Eric Jones coming out on top and making the playoffs. If we're gonna compare them, I, I hey, that. hey, back on the note of you know we'll, how many laps will we race at Daytona Road Course? I just realized we're in Daytona in the summer for four chances to see rain tires be used at Daytona. Wow. That's crazy. That'll be cool. Um, I would definitely like to see raid tires there. I mean, unrestricted engines at Daytona for the first time in a long time, and then just tires. just just imagine the possibility of, of the sight of stock cars going around the high banks of Daytona with rain tires on this poor that, night. That's gonna be funny. That's gonna be hilarious. Uh, Mr. Awesome Ford, thanks for the two bucks. Uh, Bubba and Stenhouse are two dark horse playoff guys. I agree. I agree with that. I mean, especially Stenhouse at these plate tracks, or uh, excuse me, super speedway tracks now we call them. Um, yeah, definitely for sure. And Bubba's just overall just is performing just awesome. Just amazing to see him do good. GN, thank you for the five bucks. Tommy, are you hoping for... Oh, damn, he left. He left. I'm sorry, we can't answer that. But, but um, uh, I'll read it anyways. Tommy, are you hoping for a rain race as an equalizer for small teams? Probably so. I, I, I think I think Tommy, he'll take anything he can get at this point. So, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. All right, Jared. <laughs> I just saw it. <laughs> I just saw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go. Do your thing, man. Um, And then let me see. Uh, um, Damn. More super chats, guys. Relax, chill. I need to get. I gotta, I gotta go to the bathroom. Let's hurry up. Guys, <laughs> please stop. All right, all right. Uh, bake. Don't the tell snake. them to stop. Oh my god. Who the hell tells snake. people to stop giving them money? <laughs> but, dude, I'm so tired, man. I just want to go to bed now. Just read so the tired. super chats, then, man. Bake the snake. Thank you for the two dollars, man. Can we get Leroy Jenkins in the chat? But we can all say it right now. Three, two, one. Leroy <laughs> Jenkins. Oh, we still have chicken. I, yeah. I, I think Eric just said G, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Montgomery, thank you for the two bucks. Prediction for Kentucky. Uh, um, suck pick is is uh, Christopher Bell. Dark horse is, just is gave William him. Byron. And then the winner's pick, uh, the 43 or the 48. Okay, all right, that sounds good. And then Bake the Snake, thank you for the final two bucks. Keselowski for the win. No one else matters. And then let me refresh it really quick because I don't want to read no more. But thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, okay, three more. Three more. Okay, these are the final three. Eh, stop it right now. Okay, we're going to lose. Yo, I love your channel, man. I love your stuff, man. Thank you for the 10 bucks. Matt DiBenedetto. Or no, no. Matt Diamond DiBendito for the win. <laughs> he always mispronounces <laughs> his name all the time. I love it. And then, uh, it's like how my dad is with the Benedetto's name. Oh my gosh. And then, oh my gosh, Bake the Snake. You're amazing. Thank you for the two bucks. Oh, Leroy Jenkins. Yeah, one more time. Three, two, one. I'm not yelling that Leroy again. Leroy Jenkins. I'll yell. I want the suffering to Leroy stop from Garrett. Let's go. All right. One final super chat. The last one. Jimbo Burrito. Thank you for the two bucks, man. So many super chats. Oh, yeah, I know. Now we're done. Thank you guys so much. Uh, that was awesome. Jared, Jared could have already went to the bathroom already. I, I probably, I probably could have, but uh, He's saying he didn't. He went, he went just now, probably. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, next week he's back. What the fuck? <laughs> next week, uh, we don't know what the exact time. Probably one Eastern or noon Eastern, one or the other, uh, before the All Star race. Uh, but we're gonna be on Danny's channel live, yeah. in person, mm -hmm. and also we're gonna be joined hey, by hey. a lot of guests. <laughs> Maybe without Eric. I don't know. We'll he's, see. He's questionable right now. He's questionable. If I, if I come, if I'm there, we'll have an, another but extra special. We have the oppor we have the opportunity 
for a live studio audience and many guests, including Claudia Baldwin, uh, Crystal Clay, Joseph Lombard, and many, Jake many Baskinger. More. Jake Baskinger and Bren Littell. And so on yeah. and so on and Scooby Dooby Doo. So many, so many people will be on next week. Yeah, so many people will be on next week, that's for sure. It's gonna be awesome. Pick, picks is gonna be fun. Oh yeah, it's gonna be oh, fun. Oh lord. It's gonna be a long ass section. <laughs> All right. It's going to be. All it's right. going to be. So I guess that is that it, guys? Are we done? Are we done for tonight? I think I think we are. All right. So, yeah. all right. I'm going to meet you guys. You guys make an, uh, a whole lot of noise and try and throw me off. Okay. You guys well, this are muted the end. right now. Okay. Anyways, really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you guys so much for watching tonight's edition of the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time. Goodbye. Bye.